in the air to left field. Going back on it is Yelich, back toward the wall. It is gone! Walk ball, home run, Jimmy Rollins! A towering shot here in the bottom of the 10th inning, and the Phillies have won it 5 to 4. Here he comes! It's always good when you come into a Sunday day game with a chance to sweep the opposition. It's even better when you do it on the heels of a walk-off victory. Today, it's game three of this series between the Phillies and the Miami Marlins. And today is also the beginning of Sundays with Schmidt. That's right. Mike Schmidt is doing, joining us up here in the booth, and we are looking forward to it each and every home Sunday here in Philadelphia. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Jamie Moyer and Mike Schmidt. You ready to go, Schmitty? Sure am, Tommy. Uh, I've got some jitters that I haven't had in a while, you know, <laughs> being up here. And uh, this is the real thing, so let's go. Let's go. Well, it's exciting for you and I, obviously, Jamie, to be uh, up here with Mike and get a chance to talk a little baseball with him. Very exciting. Growing up watching Mike, playing against Mike, and now being a broadcast partner with Mike, I'm very excited for today as well. All right, well, let's begin, and we'll start with Jimmy Rollins, who's had two dramatic home runs already this year. He has, and it started... Opening day in Texas with a grand, grand slam to get the the off, Phillies offense ignited. And what a great home run that was in an opposing ballpark. And it really did help the Phillies get started in that opening day victory. But as of last night, the ignition kept going. A fan <laughs> in the stands ignited Jimmy, and he hit this 10th inning walk-off home run to win the game. And Jimmy's just had a really good start to his season. First of all, he's got two home runs. He's got a new baby. He's got 10 RBIs, and he's hitting 316, and it's really what the Phillies need at the top of their offense. Well, and then it continues toward the middle of this lineup with Chase Utley, who obviously is healthy and swinging yeah. the bat well. Well, like everybody, I've been a Chase Utley fan ever since I first met him, I guess seven, eight years ago in spring training. Uh, and, and we also should remember that when he got healthy at the end of last year, he hit 354, I think, in his last 20 games. And he's hitting a 472 clip so far this year, leading the league in almost everything. But what for me is important is the energy Chase brings to our lineup. It allows all his teammates to be in the right slot in the batting order. You don't have to juggle the lineup. And there's just something about the way the team looks and plays when Chase is in there and he even missed those two days because of the flu but hasn't missed a beat 537 on base percentage so far and that leads the National League so it's going to be a good day of baseball here at Citizens Bank Park we begin Sundays with Schmidt and the Phillies go for the series sweep Henderson Alvarez gets the start for the Marlins and Kyle Kendrick great numbers against the Marlins first career he has 12 wins against Miami during the course of his career and oh yeah it is kids opening day here at Citizens Bank Park. A great opportunity to enjoy the game with your family. Lineups and first pitch for the finale of this three game series is coming up next. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. By Citizens Bank, introducing one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. By Toyota. Toyota's number one for everyone's sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. And by Independence Blue Cross, the most preferred health plan in the region. Independence Blue Cross, live fearless.
out as we get set for the start of this uh, final game of this three game series. The umpires have already gotten the lineup cards. The uh, starting nine. It's a tradition here on Sundays where randomly selected kids get a chance to go out to their favorite position and they wait patiently for their favorite Philly to arrive and they could possibly get an autograph and it's appropriate today because it is kids opening day here at Citizens Bank Park for a lot of these kids they're probably sitting there wondering hmm what am I going to get a chance to do once the players come out well Carlos Marmol with the young guy who's out in left field he took his Phillies hat making him run after it Fans were booing him a little bit, but everybody was fine. There was a lot of laughter. And now their dreams come true. The youngsters wait for their favorite Philly player to come on out and get an autograph before the National Anthem is played. That young guy has been waiting out at second base for Chase Utley for about 10 minutes or so. And there's Ryan Howard giving that youngster an autograph. Pretty special thing here at Citizens Bag Park. So as we mentioned, it's Turkey Hill Kids Opening Day. Here at Citizens Bank Park as the Phillies look for the series sweep against these Miami Marlins. Dan Baker, the Phillies public address announcer, is asking everybody, all the gentlemen, to remove their hats as we get set for the national anthem here at Citizens Bank Park. And we have a, a children's choir, the Catholic Community Choir, who will sing today's national anthem. the Catholic Community Choir from Springfield, Pennsylvania with our national anthem here this afternoon on a bright sunshiny afternoon. And that little guy doesn't want to leave Cody Ashy's side as he's standing over at third base. This kid right here was one of the cutest you'll ever see. He was dusting off that second base area and waiting for Chase Utley to come out and waiting to get that autograph. And he's going to be a happy camper. He may uh, fall asleep in about an hour or so, but he's going to be a happy camper walking away with that Chase Utley autograph. <laughs> this is what we were watching. We got a chance to watch as he walked out. And <laughs> I know you guys sign a lot of autographs, but that, I mean, as you sit and watch it, it doesn't get old watching something like that. Those are some of my best moments on pitching these days and running out to the mound and hanging out with the kid, asking him some questions, having some fun with him, and just being a kid myself. <laughs> Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Marlins. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home. For the most live sports, Christian Yelich leads it off in left, followed by Adani Echeverria. Giancarlo Stanton bats third, Garrett Jones fourth. Casey McGee will hit fifth, Marcelo Zuna sixth. At the bottom third of Baker, Mathis, and Henderson Alvarez. And they will face Phillies right-hander Kyle Kendrick. 0-1 this year, 12 innings in two starts. Jamie has great numbers against the Miami Marlins. But since the last complete game against the Marlins, his numbers have gone downhill, and he's just trying to get himself back to where he was in his first starts. Yeah, and really, I think he's trying to get himself back to where he was in spring training, where he was able to utilize his curveball, his newfound pitch that he created in spring training. But, you know, for Kyle to be effective today, he's going to have to use his sinker, change speed, use his changeup, use his cutter, but implement his curveball. Well, you see his record against the Marlins 12 and 2 with an ERA of 3.48. Let's start now with our Nissan Keys to this afternoon's ball game. We talked about Kyle Kendrick and uh, 
what he needs to do. He's probably a big key for the Phils today. Jamie. He is a big key, and I think it'd be really nice. It'd be a big boost for Rhino and the pitching staff to see Kyle get deep into the game today. All right, Schmidt, what about the offense? Well, we talk a lot about Rollins uh, and, and Chase in the opening today. I guess uh, the next guy to key on for us to put the spotlight on Ryan Howard today, and uh, it's one more piece to the puzzle. If we can get Ryan going like those other two guys, uh, we could be off and running. Well, Kendrick is ready. So is Christian Yelich. First pitch of the day is in there for a strike. So we're underway. Yelich is three for ten with a walk so far in the series. He's let off all three days. Out of play. It's a two. Both Ryan Sandberg and Larry Boa were raving about Christian Yelich. They they like his body and they like his actions out in the outfield too. Some catch he made last night. <laughs> it's a great catch. I don't know how he made it. Yeah, that was a great catch. And he's got pretty good speed. Supre you know, sneaky speed. 0 2 pitch. Just a little inside. One ball and two strikes. On that uh, Kyle Kendrick subject, I'd like to just throw out how overrated I think he, or excuse me, underrated I think he is as a pitcher for the Phillies. He's been an e inning eater. He's got some great uh, comparative stats the rest of the league. I think he can pitch three, four, five on any team in baseball. Well, 64 and 56, and he has one of the, the highest winning percentages here in this ballpark, too. Shows that he's been around for a while, but also shows that he has been fairly consistent in the win column. And he's been fairly durable, and to be able to have that kind of success in this ballpark is important as well. 2 2 pitch. Change up, down and away, 3 and 2. And I believe if he can pitch in this ballpark, he can pitch in any ballpark. I think it was John Smoltz who said that first. You know, when the small park opened, John was very opinionated about it, but he said that same thing. Ground ball toward first, and Howard mishandles it. Yelich runs well, so he's going to get to second. And for Ryan, it's uh, going to be another error on another playable ball. So out of the shoot, the Marlins have a runner at second base with nobody out here in the top of the first. Well, obviously, Schmidt, it's a t it's hard yeah. to not l let a ball play you. And that ball has a lot of top spin, you know, when it comes off the grass, the second hop, and and you know, it, Ryan, maybe if he could have uh, taken another crow hop toward the stands and maybe gotten his body in front of it, he could have at least kept it in the infield, maybe flipped it to Kendrick. But um, with all the talk about some of Ryan's deficiencies right now physically, the crowd doesn't take to a play like that no. too well. <laughs> Well, here's Echevarria batting second. He batted eight the first two days, and the first pitch is outside. It's 1 0. Echevarria is 4 for 7. Yeah, when Kyle pitches, you got to make the plays for him, too, because you know he. Well, Jamie, uh, would you say he's a pitcher that pitches to contact? He has to, for him to have success, he has to pitch to contact. That's part of the reason why he's been successful in the Phillies uniforms, because the Phillies defense traditionally. And with Chase at second, with Rollins at short, with Polanco or Feliz over at third, they've been a good defensive infield. I tell you, that ball will find you if you don't want to hit to you. Exactly. <laughs> you're right. If you're over there saying, don't hit it to me, it will be hit to you. Two balls and no strikes. That's in for a strike. It's two and one. You know how I know that? <laughs> many, many times I stood at third base saying, Please hit it to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I don't think anybody would ever expect no, that. No, no, no. I acted cool over there, but sometimes <laughs> I didn't want it hit to me. <laughs> Inside, three and one. And on the flip side of that, Mike, if I had an infielder that missed the ball, I knew he felt bad. And but my biggest goal was I would turn around and say, I'll get you another one. I wanted him to get another ball because I wanted him to redeem himself. Because I know you're down there thinking, you know, like you're saying, I don't want this ball hit to me. I want you, I need you to make plays for me. So I need you to feel comfortable in the infield. That's interesting. <laughs> you didn't have a pitcher do that for you, Mike? <laughs> oh, here we go. See? Now that's a little easier. Oh, the Philly fans, they don't miss much at all, do they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad it, I'm glad it jumped right up to Ryan Howard's waist. <laughs> Oh, there's two out, one out, excuse me, a runner over at third. Here's Giancarlo Stanton. 
Might it be a reasonable comment to say you might not want to pitch to contact right now? Yeah, I, I would think. Well, that this you, yeah, you've got a base open. You, you know, it's early in the game. You know, you want to still you want to try to control the game. Plus, this guy hit yep. one a country mile last night for 470 feet in left center field. Well, if the one he hit to the left field would have gone on a different trajectory, we, we might have been talking about that one too. Yeah, there were people out there that were trying to size it up to make the catch, and in the last moment they peeled off. Fly ball, shallow center, Utley backpedaling. Yelich is going off the bag a little bit, so there will be a runner at third with two outs. Turned out to be a pretty good pitch by Kyle Kendrick. Yeah, and I was surprised that Yelich was off the bag. With Chase going backwards, calling for the ball, Chase is going away from the infield. And when with Yelich's sneaky speed, I thought maybe he would at least give it a chance to try to draw that throw. I hear what you're saying. I just don't quite think it was deep enough for for that. Uh, I thought the same thing, but he he, he might have tagged up and maybe made a good fake. Or exactly. Something, but yeah, just maybe, to draw maybe the throw. Yeah, maybe Shea short hops the cutoff man in the infield, and the ball bounces away, and then he can score. But even if he throws it in, the ball hits. How many times you see the ball hit the back of the mound? Yep. Well, Garrett Jones the batter, and Jones takes inside. And we're only in the top of the first city, but how careful are you with this left-hander here, with the righty McGee in the on-deck circle? Well, I, I think you know uh, Stanton and Jones. You've got to be careful. You know, you've got a base open, and you know if you prefer to to face McGee, he, then go ahead. You know, and right now, you know, we're seeing not that he's pitching around him, but I mean he's being careful to how he's pitching. You know, for me as a pitcher, I'm thinking, all right, if I can sneak a ball in there and get ahead of him. It would maybe something he chases a non strike early in the count because of his aggression. I can maybe get the upper hand in this at bat. 2 0 off the outside corner 3 0. <laughs> so I turn this hitter loose right now from the Marlins. So go ahead and smoke one somewhere. But today's generation of hitters are generally trained to take 3 0. Not a bad pitch. It was a cutter off the inside part of the plate. And ball four. So three three ball counts so far for Kyle. And it puts runners on first and third. And it'll bring Casey McGee to the plate. Mark Ripperger is the home plate umpire, the rookie. Gary Cedarstrom's a crew chief. He's over at first. Kerwin Danley's at second. And Lance Barksdale is around at third. Let's see if Kyle can work his way out of this. McGee has. Uh, five at bats lifetime against Kyle. He's one for five. Overall hitting 279 with no home runs and 10 runs batted in. Chase Utley just asked the second base umpire to move to the other side of the diamond. He tried to do that the other night with Ripperger behind the who was behind the plate out at second. As that pitch misses inside. Wow. Yeah, what was that all about? I was watching on TV and uh, I didn't have the sound on. I asked Chase about it today. He said, uh, "He said I was asking him to move because he was in my sight." And I said, "Well, what did he say?" He goes, "I'm not allowed to." <laughs> he said he's a rookie umpire. He wasn't sure if he was allowed to shift over to the other side. Inside, two and zero. Oh. I said I'd never heard that before. Yeah, they, they're usually very obliging to to move or to adjust to to allow the whether it be the center fielder or the middle middle infielder to see. The 2 0 pitch from Kendrick. There's a strike. It's two and one. Well, that first pitch in this at bat I thought was awfully close, and it, that changes this whole at bat. I think you know, instead of Kyle being two and zero oh, throwing that pitch, it's now one and one, and throwing that pitch, it's now one and two. Ground ball foul and it's two and two. During the 2014 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. Brothers on first and third, two outs here in the top of the first. Ground ball foul again. And it remains two and two. A 
McGee is two for seven in this series for the Marlins. He's walked a couple times. Making the transition back to the United States after playing a year ago in Japan. Won a Japanese World Series last year in Japan. I didn't ask him, but it must have been neat for him to sit there and watch the Tanaka guy pitch. He was on the same team as him last year. Oh, well. So that was a great experience. Out of play, right side. Nice play by that gentleman right there. Well, the errors forced Kyle to work a little harder here. And McGee's also fouling some pitches off that's forcing it a little bit too. Well, the whole key for Kyle is he's worked so hard to get to two, two outs. There's a ground ball just off the glove of Rollins. It's a left field. And a run will score. It's one nothing. Marlins on top. An unearned run crosses the plates. That's good at bat. Uh, McGee, I believe, has something like 11 RBIs, which puts him amongst the league leaders. So. And he pitched around Jones, uh, the cleanup hitter, like he wanted to get to McGee. And uh, he, he's a good RBI man. Just got the bat head out, and the pitch that didn't get inside enough, and an RBI single. So the Marlins take the early lead, and here comes Marcelo Zuna. With well, the runners on first and second, Ozuna was batting second the first two games of this series. Hits that one off his foot. Mm. I believe he hit one off his back foot last night, if I'm not mistaken, in the game. Remember, he was on a tear last year when he was in here. Yeah. Marlins have a nice lineup. I mean, this kid hitting sixth. They have a nice lineup. Well, a young one, too, that's ever growing. I'm sure you've done that a million times, Mike, fouling a ball off your foot. Yes, I have. I have a couple of ugly looking toes as a result right now of fouling balls off my feet. He's having trouble even putting any weight on that foot right now. There he goes. Oh, and seeing that and watching McGee's at bat, it really tells me that Kyle, when he's throwing that ball into these right handers, got some good movement, good sink, and even with his changeup, McGee, he fouled a couple balls off. That's telling me, you know, they're tracking that ball in as it's coming closer to their body and, and the only way they can get to that ball is get the head out and they're pulling it foul and, and right there Ozuna got on top of it and pulled it foul down into his foot. And I like seeing that as a pitcher. You got to know what else you like too. You're going to throw the other one right in the same spot right. Exactly. <laughs> so he bounced it off his foot again. Exactly. Well you notice he's got a shin guard on so he's obviously done it to his shin too. There it is. <laughs> yeah, he decided to lay off this time. Those are the numbers that Mike was talking about here at Citizens Bank Park. It's carryover from last year when he hit nearly 400 against the Phillies here at Citizens Bank Park. And a 1 1 pitch. Ground ball foul. <laughs> Keep on getting in there, boys. Yeah, that's a that's not a good thing for a hitter when he keeps pitching him in off the plate and he keeps pulling it more foul. I think he's a little vulnerable, Jamie. What do you think on yep. the outer half? I right hear you. Now? You know, but it's got to be a quality pitch. It doesn't have to be, you know, pitch on the black. But it's got to be down. It's got to be moving away. You know, I have a feeling if he gets there, you go. Well, the perfect pitch to wrap up the first inning. One run scores. It's an unearned run. Kendrick throws 28 pitches to finish it up. We go to the bottom of the first.
as a, a lineup that he's used uh, these last couple of days out there again today. Let's take a look at it. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at center field, Tony Gwynn. Jimmy Rollins bats second, followed by Chase Sutley and Ryan Howard. Marlon Birds in right field, he'll hit fifth. Dominic Brown, sixth. Wilton the Aves does the catching, he'll bat seventh. Cody Ashley will hit eighth today. And batting ninth at pitching is Kyle Kendrick. And they will face a 23 year old right hander Henderson Alvarez 0 2 with an ERA of 4.15. This guy's got a no hitter under his belt Jamie he pitched a no hitter last year for the Miami Marlins. Well, that's impressive and I think what we're going to see here today is fairly impressive too. another young kid 23 year old as you said first night we had a 22 year old starter last and a 25 year old starter today a 23 year old starter the Marlins got to be happy about that. But we're going to see a, a pretty good sinker here, a ground ball pitcher with a slider, curveball, changeup combination. Really relies on the ground ball. Yeah, the last two guys, power pitchers. And here, Anderson Alvarez, as you said, more of a contact guy. But at 93 98, there's some power there, too. Well, Tony Gwynn will lead things off for the Phillies. First pitch is on the inside corner, it's 0 and 1. I have to admit, we saw Alvarez last year. I don't remember his windup being <laughs> quite like this. Maybe that's just for the first pitch of the game. No, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yep. 0 and 2, fastball. There you go at 94. What is 2 for 8 so far in this series? Ben Revere's fine. Ryan Sandberg just uh, said he likes the way Wynn has been playing these last couple of days, so he figured he'd run him out there again today. On the year, he's three for 12. And it's one ball and two strikes. Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Theodore Weagle of Brookhaven, Pennsylvania. Phillies hit a home run at today's ball game. Then Theodore will win a hundred dollars. By the way, congratulations to Marge Ellers of Ridley Park. She walked off. With $200, courtesy of Jimmy Rollins last night. As Tony Gwynn is aboard to start the first. Jimmy Rollins comes up to the plate. That brings us to our, our Geico quote of the day. He swung like a guy who had one thing in mind not to play any more extra innings. Jimmy's playing well. He's swinging the bat well. He's setting the tone at the top of the order and playing good baseball. Rhino was even talking about it more today, Murph, about what Jimmy Rollins was able to do last night. Yeah, he really was, Tom. He called him a catalyst. And, uh, you know, Jimmy Rollins has been a catalyst for this Phillies team for much of his career. But Jimmy talked about the adjustment that he had to make uh, to this number two spot in the lineup, uh, the longtime leadoff guy, and making that adjustment. He said it has been that. He's, you know, thinking about his at-bats a little bit differently than he did when he was at the top of the lineup, probably taking a couple more pitches, allowing a guy to steal a base when needed. But he did say w when a leadoff guy gets down to second base, at that point he is ready to go and ready to drive them in. And so far, so good. He's got 10. RBIs as that ball skips past you allows Tony Gwynn Jr. to advance the second. He did say that uh, you know he's he loves driving in the runs. He's got 10 RBIs and seven runs scored so far this year. So the adjustment seems to be working, guys. Well, now he's got a chance to drive home a run there. That'll That's be right. an E1. Merck made a lot of good points right there, but we'll get a good chance here to see Jimmy as a two-hole hitter, where his job is. One thing to advance Gwynn to third yep. base. Look, Gwynn might go to third on this the way the ball got away from Garrett Jones. Give Jones credit though, he got to it quickly and he picked up Pete McCannon. Well, the Marlins are one of the leaders right now in errors in the National League. And yeah, they pick up one there. The count is one ball and no strikes to Rollins, who's hit in three straight games. And that one's lined towards center field. Ozuna will make the catch. Yeah, there's one away. Well, Jimmy hit the ball hard. No question about that. I mean, you can't second guess that, but the ball needs to be put on the ground. Any way you put it on the ground uh, to move that runner to third base. Well, that'll bring Chase to the plate. Chase, four for eight in the series with three RBIs. 472 with two home runs and nine runs batted in. It's got to be a good feeling to be able to get off to this kind of a start offensively. I would think. 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there had to be some year. We should have done some research and checked it out. No, I want to know. Jamie, did you ever get off to a start like this offensively? No. <laughs> Little league, maybe. Yeah. Uh, he's sitting atop the leaderboard in on base percentage at 537. He's got a couple guys ahead of him with six doubles, but he has five doubles and six runs scored. And the 1 0 pitch in the dirt, two balls and no strikes. Speaking of the on base percentage, we take a look at our Mazda leaders. Charlie Blackman leads the league in hitting and is second behind Utley in on base percentage. There are three guys from the National League East, including Freddie Freeman and Jason Worth. I guess Emilio Bonifacio hasn't cooled off at all. Doesn't look like it. Cool off. Well, the Phillies cooled him off a little bit. A little bit. Question I would ask right now is do you think Chase realizes any of that? No. <laughs> I think he just realizes he's feeling good. <laughs> Fouls it off. It's two and one. Is there a guy that you remember that was like Chase personality wise that you played with Mike me you <laughs> Chase doesn't smile a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, kind of a different kind of guy uh, he almost I mean he's a wonderful guy he's just you look at Chase uh, around the field at the ballpark and it's almost uh, like you're a little fearful of approaching him. I was kind of quiet today when I up and asked him a couple questions. Jamie, you played with him, so you, you you have a different relationship with him. Yeah, and I think he he got that respect in the clubhouse, but everybody understood and knew that it was part of his daily preparation. And I think once you got through that feeling, Mike, of eh, I don't want to bother him or I feel like I'm bothering him, you really understood that he did have time if it was the appropriate time, and he was always willing to share knowledge with you if you had a question. And I think that's what's so good about Chase. You know, it's just his schedule uh, or his daily routine was really, really important to him, and I, and he really just stayed with that. And I think that's maybe what intimidated some of the guys with that. But deep down, he just wants to not only make himself better, but make his teammates better. Well said. Well, he's got the count full. Three balls and two strikes. Alvarez kind of deliberate here in the bottom of the first. Inside ball four. Good patient at bat. Um, I wanted to say typical, but uh, the kind of at bat a guy that's a hot hitter has, you know. Got a, he got a good pitch to hit 2 and 0, fouled it off, took a good swing at it, ended up just taking what the game gave him and setting the table for Ryan Howard, who, by the way, we're focusing on today. That's right. He was your key <laughs> to get him rolling. Ryan has driven in five so far, but just the one home run. And he's got a chance now with runners on first and second, not as drastic an overshift as he's used to. And they're deep in the outfield and left and center. Numbers with runners in scoring position. The Phillies as a team are hitting a little above 260 with runners in scoring position. Ground ball back toward the middle. Utley is going to try to get to second, and he does. So that means Howard is retired at first. And that'll put runners on second and third with two outs. Well, it's a long game, Mike. We can use that key yeah, later. I'm on. trying to figure out a comment on that. There's <laughs> <laughs> a rollover on a uh, took something off a fastball or a change up away on the first pitch. You saw two in the spectrum of hitting. You saw two different guys right there. Chase, who's hitting close to 500, looking at six pitches, and Ryan, who's still trying to get it rolling. Over aggressive and rolling over on a ground ball. 
Well, but Bird is now the batter with two on. And Bird takes outside. It's one ball and no strikes. Marlin hitting 261, two homers, eight RBIs. I'd ask Jamie uh, about Ryan's at bat. Are you aware going into a game when you're pitching of, of something like that? Chase is really hot. Ryan Howard's a little oh, over aggressive. Most definitely. And you you know, I would try to pick out guys that look, if I could be in a situation that's optimal to me, I don't want a certain guy to beat me. Or if, you know, his strength is my strength and I don't th maybe think that my strength can beat his strength. Then I'm going to try to figure out a way or try to pitch around him to get to the next guy in the hopefully that next guy in the lineup I'm feeling more comfortable with. If it's back to back guys, you know, I've got to, you know, choose my poison or get the guys out before them. Uh, that that I, I try to make that the utmost important thing. They're going to be barking with this home plate umpire. Yeah, the strike zone is a little erratic right now. And again, he's a young, young young guy, but it's not like he's not done this before. Absolutely. He just doesn't hasn't done it on this stage. I kind of thought that last strike was the same pitch he called the ball earlier in the count. First base open, that was a slider, 2 0. Oh. Up high, 3 and 1. I get the impression by looking at Alvarez's stats that he's really good when he's on. And, and I don't want to say really bad, but you know, he's, he's, he's either feast or famine by the way I'm watching him right now. One thing that stood out so far is that he is pretty deliberate. He's taking a lot of time in between pitches. Good hitters count for Bird. And he lays off. There's ball four. Jamie, I, I, for for me, I, Bird would be the guy I would want in that situation. I mean, I got, I know I got the first base open, but I agree. But you know, he started off behind in the count, made one, you know, got to one and one, and then then fell behind. And, you know, and I'm sure he's trying to pitch away. Maybe there, it almost looked like he was pitching away from contact, trying to get the swing and miss. But he, if he's the type of pitcher that's going to rely on the ground ball, you've got to be aggressive with your pitches down in the zone to, to create that ground ball and rely on your defense. Dominic Brown 300 hitters so far this year. Outside one ball and no strikes. <clears throat> but again we're talking about a young pitcher too, a 23 year old pitcher who's learning as he's as he's going through this. It's a big at bat for both teams right here for the Phillies who could blow this you know. Blow the doors off of this thing, and for the Marlins to keep the game close. Marlins scored an unearned run in their half for the first. The Phils are trying to counter it here. Ball two. Are you taking a strike here with you, Dominic Brown? Me, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm looking fastball anywhere on the side, anywhere on that side of me. Well, there you go. 95 mile an hour fastball. It's two and one. And you did that pretty well looking for that <laughs> fastball anywhere on that side of you. <laughs> Dominic's numbers with the bases loaded during his career. Got Gwyn at third, Utley at second, Bird at first. Early opportunity for the Phils down by one. Chopper foul. Well, he's really amping it up here. 97 on that last fastball. It's impressive to be able to watch guys reach back for a little bit more. I mean, he's been sitting 93 to 95 most of, the, of this inning here. And oh, here, I got another gear. So we get a miss. He got him. 96 on that fastball. First strikeout of the inning. The Phillies will leave him loaded. They get a hit. They get a couple of walks. We've completed one. We go to the second. It's the Marlins one and the Phillies nothing.
Now it's the start of a four game series, the first Hatfield Dollar Dog Night of the season. The series winds down on Thursday. It's a 105 business person special. A Citizens Bank Red Goes Green Day, a free MLB Network reusable tote for all fans. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. Now, top of the second, 1 0, Marlins on top. Both pitchers expended a lot of uh, energy, I guess you can say, in their half of the first. Let's see if Kyle Kendrick can settle down here against the bottom third. Baker, Mathis, and Henderson Alvarez. Baker's playing second base because Derek Dietrich has got a stiff back. He played last night. In fact, he's one for seven in the series. Ground ball to shortstop. One pitch, one away. Well, that's a nice way to settle down in the second yeah. inning of work. <laughs> Jamie, don't you like that when you throw oh. 28 pitches in the previous inning and all of a sudden you throw the 29th and you have one out? Yeah, that's that's the way to get restarted. And it's even better if this guy comes up and does the same thing. Go right down the middle, right? Yep. Well, Jeff Mathis is a 200 hitter for the year. They got him in the same deal, that mega deal with the Blue Jays. Where they sent Burley and Reyes and all those guys to Toronto and they got the shortstop, they got the starting pitcher. They got a bunch of guys in that deal. I'd say they made out in that deal. I think long term and with the contracts that they were able to get rid of, I would I would agree with you at this point. I, don't, I didn't think that at the time. I really didn't. Well, usually in trades like that, you do have to give them time to, to make that assessment, but I would say at this point they have they have the upper hand on it. Right side, a base hit for Mathis, a one out single. Monday night on Philly's Clubhouse, Marshall Harris takes you inside Carlos Ruiz's charity bowling tournament, which is tonight, plus an exclusive conversation with all star outfielder Dominic Brown. Catch Philly's Clubhouse, presented by Mercedes Benz, Monday night at 11 on Comcast Sportsnet. Henderson Alvarez, pretty good athlete, he had nine hits. In 30 at bats last season, he bunts that one back toward the mound. And he's taking a little Sunday stroll up the first baseline, one away, or two away, excuse me. Jamie, what kind of bunner were you when you played? I thought it was a pretty good bunner. I spent a lot of time with it and really realized the importance of bunning and how it can help you stay in a game, number one. But number two, if you can advance that runner, and turn that lineup over. You know, like right here, you know, they advance a runner to second base. It's far easier to score. There's more ways to score from second than there is from first, and obviously there's more from third. So being able to do that in as a as a bunner and even as a hitter, if you can foul some pitches off and make the pitcher work. So you just saw Brett Butler as coaching third, who was one as Jamie mentioned the other night, one of the best in the yeah. game during his time. One thing I, I, I question about bunning today is why do they coach squaring around so early? Well, my thought is it's a sacrifice bunt. What does sacrifice mean? You're giving yourself up. Understood. But Everybody I mean, in the ballpark knows. So you get yourself in position so you can be prepared to bunt the ball. And to me, you start the bat at the top of the zone and you use your knees or your legs to lower the bat. You don't lower the bat with your hands. You use your knees and you work and try to catch the ball with the barrel of the bat. But your, your heart has to be into it. <laughs> Inside three and zero. Oh. That's a great answer. But my comeback to that would be: I just don't like or wouldn't like to see the corner infielders, you know, closing in on me to the point where, since I squared around so early, I feel like I really have to deaden the ball. You know what I mean? I have to make a perfect bunt. So you were a more confident bunter than a lot of guys were, though. One of the greatest bunners, bunning pitchers we ever had here in Philly is Steve Carlton. And he never even squared around. He just stood in his batting stance and just went boop while the ball was on the way. That tells me he practiced a lot. You know, and he was very comfortable with it. I don't it. know about that. <laughs> well, he was very he was very comfortable. He with was it. a good hitter. Yes, he was. Off the hands, a bloop towards center. That's going to drop for a base hit. Rounding third, heading for home is Mathis. And he'll score. It's a two-nothing ball game. Well, to your point about putting that runner in scoring position, Jamie, it surely paid off there with two outs. 
Yeah, they had a chance to do that last night and they didn't do it late in the game. With a runner at first base they decided not to bunt with the number nine and it wasn't a pitcher. They decided to have him swing away. He wound up flying out to center field. So here the bunt. Puts the runner in scoring position gives him a run and here's Echeverria up for the second time. When Tom, you talk about that trade, you get a, a great catcher in uh, Mathis who's been around the game. He can do a lot of things as a catcher. He's got experience. You get a starting pitcher and you get a potential long term shortstop. I think when you look at that trade, I hate to dwell on it. Yeah, this kid is going to be a good one. He's already shown that as he flies out to right field. Side is retired one run on two hits one man left for the Marlins middle of the second it's the Marlins two and the Phillies nothing. Called on radio that day by the great HK Harry Callis and today of course is the fifth anniversary of Harry's passing that beautiful statue which is a great reminder for all of us and of course the Harry Callis broadcast booth where we get a chance to call games each and every day here at Citizens Bank Park Whitey's booth is next door uh, the radio booth is named after uh, Whitey uh, but this is always a day of remembrance with uh, HK the anniversary of HK's passing down in Washington D.C. Uh, five years ago, yeah. and that's one of the greatest calls. Uh, I mean, as a uh, as a person from Philadelphia, that's one of the greatest calls you can ever recall. Well, I, I'm he's he was special in my life for a lot of reasons, and uh, I don't have time to tell you all of them right now. But we've traveled together. We've uh, spent a lot of time on airplanes, traveling from town to town together. Uh, he's one of the kindest men I've ever met. I remember never remember Harry saying anything negative about anybody. Um, and a passionate baseball man, Jamie, you'd agree with that, right? 100 percent. Yeah. Well, the A-Base leads it off. Well, that day in D.C., which, you know, we, we've been reflecting on it the last few days with a number of people. Uh, that day in D.C. was difficult for everyone. There's no question about it. Jamie, you had a pitch that yeah. day when Harry passed away. Yeah, it was uh, it was tough to hear the news. But I'll tell you what, I barely was able to get through my bullpen. Mm -hmm. Barely. For a lot of people that were coming to the ballpark that day, because there were a lot of Phillies fans, as Nieves bloops one into right field for a base hit. They had heard rumblings from people that something had happened, that Harry had fallen ill. But it wasn't until, for some people, game time in the ballpark when the Nationals announced it that Phillies fans realized that he had passed away. And then, of course, the ceremonies that followed here at the ballpark, which were so brilliantly done. Just a, a week of remembrance. This is a day that we always get a chance to reflect. I always marvel at the fact that that was not his call. He, he was so excited, Schmidt, for your home run <laughs> that he went off the board with his with his <laughs> home run call. 
When you think about like like Harry Callis in the Phillies, Vince Scully in the Dodgers, I mean, who could be more important to an organization than that guy, the guy that uh, that brings baseball to the community? I agree with that. As that ball is lined toward third, and Davis is back. And Vin may be retiring sometime very shortly. And these are some of the amazing things that Harry was able to accomplish during his life. Called the first game at the Astrodome. Called the first and last games at the Vet. And of course, the first game here. Got a chance to call the 08 World Championship, which we are all so thankful that he was able to be on the air when Brad Lidge struck out Eric Hinsky for that final out. And then a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame. And, you know, I do a lot of football. And people around the National Football League. As Kendrick bunts that one to first and the sacrifice is successful. They think of him in terms of football too because he was such a great narrator for NFL films. And a voice of Westwood One Radio. Yeah he was an amazing man. Uh, uh, I, I can't imagine living my whole life. Uh, not having said anything drug story about other people. I mean Harry, I, Harry never had a bad word to say about anybody. Wow. Talking about that statue, it's such a beauty. And if you haven't been, I mean, obviously, Philly fans know where it is, and they visit it often. But it is down the left field line here on the lower level at Citizens Bank Park. There it is, right there. Such a beautiful tribute, just over the top of everybody down there. Tony Gwynn singled his first time up, and then he grounds that foul. It's 0-1. I think I could say. I don't know if he called every home run that I hit in my career, but I know he was in the booth for every home run. I guess uh, I think he he always mentioned that he saw every one of your 548 home right. runs. I mean, you know, for those guys, uh, Harry, Andy, Musser, Wheels. I mean, you know, they got a chance to see from start to finish in one way or another. Here's a ground ball to right field, a base hit, and they're going to hold me a base hit third. With John Carlos Stanton's arm. And Wood is now two for two. But from Harry's standpoint, he was either on the air or in the booth watching every one of your own runs. Well, let's bring Jimmy Rollins up in another key spot. Yes, and they are not going to test the arm of John Carlos Stanton. <laughs> Well, it's interesting. You look where he plays, and he's, he, you know, he's fairly, I won't say he's deep, but he's fairly deep. But as that ball is hit through the infield, he comes charging hard to it. And he, when he picks it up, he's in shallow right field with a ton of momentum and a plus arm. He makes, you know, every third base coach cringe. Where if he waited back on that ball and waited for the ball to come to him, there'd be some guys challenging that arm. Yeah, the Phillies challenged it the other night. And it wasn't a fair fight. No, it wasn't. But it's because he comes to the ball. Right. I guess that's his athleticism mm -hmm. that he's able to make that kind of play on the run. Well, and we saw last night after he did make a throw, he was kind of throwing his arm around like it was bothering him. So it would be nice to be able to see if, you know, that was a nice throw there, but see if he can make that long throw. One ball, no strikes to Rollins. Rollins lined out to center his first time up. A lot of that has to do, Jamie and, and Tom, with the, the runner and the speed of the runner on second base. I guess Navis is a runner at second base, probably not uh, very fleet of foot being a catcher. And you, you know whether or not you're sent to home has a lot to do with the lead you get and your quick you know your first two steps. I don't know. I coach a little third base in the World Baseball Classic, and I tell the runner at second base, get a big lead because I am sending you home on a single. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You are scoring. Oh, and if the base runners know that, you know, then that you're you're kind of forcing them. You're putting right. it in their hands. Once fights it off, it's one ball and two strikes. Toyota Major League scoreboard: The Braves are shutting out the Nationals six nothing. Freddie Freeman has a three-run home run. Nationals uh, lost a very important piece to their puzzle yesterday in Ryan Zimmerman. 
Murph will have more on that later on. What was that? A hesitation throw over. I think it was just let you know I know you're there. I guess he stepped off. <laughs> Low ball two. It's two and two. This kid's throwing a lot of fastballs. A whole lot of foul. I'm impressed that he has that ability and that confidence to just keep firing fastballs up there. You don't see that very often in the game anymore, especially with the power arms. The power arms, yeah, they use the power, but you see a lot of sliders, you see a lot of curveballs and splits. Whoa. Man. Well, he thought he had Rollins rung up right there. Would you agree with that, Mike? That he's throwing a lot of fastballs. Well, and you don't see it as much. It's not as prevalent. You know, the guys with the big arms back when you played, you probably they you, they made you prove that they could hit their you you could hit their fastball before they threw you anything else. I would agree with that. Yeah, back in the day, uh, the Nolan Ryan's, Tom Seavers, you get three or four fastballs in that bat for sure to hit. Exactly. Win will be off from first, and the three-two pitch. Round ball toward first. And Garrett Jones is there. And the inning is over. No runs, two hits, and two men left. Well, with the thoughts of HK, we will leave you for the top of the third inning with images of the greatest voice that Philadelphia has ever heard on the anniversary of his passing. Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, guys, the question is, and we'll answer it a little later on, what Phillies player on this date in 1955, so it was neither one of you, saw his club record consecutive games playing streak end at 730? And again, the answer will be revealed a little later on. You guys can debate it back and forth. 1955. <laughs> this is the part where I like I like when you guys write down notes and and see if you can come up with a little deduction. John Carlos Stanton will lead it off here in the top of the third. Stanton popped out to short center his first time up to Chase Utley. First pitch is outside. It's one and zero. All right, Mike. What did you think of those two home runs he hit last night? <laughs> what did you think impressive. of that first one? Pretty impressive. Uh, we were talking about. I was, I was sitting with Aaron Boone last night. <laughs> Broadcaster decoy. Uh, I was sitting with Aaron Boone last night, and we were talking about how far he could hit one in this stadium a couple innings before he did. And we had him on the Budweiser sign out there, and he had one right on the line with <laughs> the it. The Budweiser <laughs> sign. <laughs> now that would be a shot. That oh, watch out! Look people. out, everybody. How do? 
Jamie, explain that to me. Tom. I can't. Why would anybody want to catch that? I, I, well, I think first of all, they don't realize how quickly it's coming to them. And yeah, I, I, I'd be running. There was a guy that stood up with his hands up looking to catch it. Here's the thing: you can't stand up like you're going to catch it and then go, "Oh no, I don't want to," <laughs> and then <laughs> move, and then it gets the person behind him. <laughs> Well, that home run last night, and, and they don't have anything official on this stuff, but last year, Evan Gaddis hit one 486 out toward that area where Stanton hit it last night. His was 470. Swing and a miss. He got him. One out here in the third. All right, so this is the guy last night. This is the ball out toward uh, Tony Lutz and uh, hit him right off the head, right off the top of the head. They should give him the ball, whoever got it, if it hit him on top of the head. They should give him the ball, maybe give him a cheesesteak from Tony Lukes just to settle him down. Here's Garrett Jones. Jones walked his first time up. Swing and a miss. It's 0 1. I mean, from a baseball standpoint, as a fan, there's an entertainment value to see a guy hit a ball that far. I mean, there is. I mean, and it was. It was something to behold when he got, got a hold of that one last night. You hope it's your guy though that's doing it. Yeah, he's definitely the one young player in our league, Trout in the other league, that that hit line drives that people talk about. I remember back in the day, Richie Allen used to be that player. Uh, I don't know whether to believe it or not, but the story was going around that he hit a line drive under between Seaver's legs and over the center field fence. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to envision. <laughs> but I'll believe you. Okay. Must have been a heck of a jump once it got out towards second base. There's the two on pitch to Jones. Foul ball, it's two and two. The people used to say that he used to hit towering long home runs. Allen? Oh, yeah. He hit like Stanton, a lot like Stanton. He's the only right handed hitter I ever saw that could scare a first baseman with a line drive. And you think about it, I mean, right handed hitters, you know, that can hit a ball the opposite way to the first baseman. Fights it off, it remains two and two. The other thing about Richie is that, I mean, Stanton's a large, he's a large man. Richie was. Was a strong, he was a strong guy, but he wasn't a tall guy like John Carlos. No, Rich, Richie's not tall. Uh, he looks, he looks like, you know, a, a, a big man. His waist is like 27, 28 inches when he played back then. He, he, the greatest baseball body I've ever seen. Hands like a blacksmith. And a called strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Fans follow every Phillies game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and much more. Download on the App Store. Visit Phillies.com today. Jamie looks like Kendrick settled in a little bit. Got a little rhythm now. Yeah, he does. Ahead of hitters. Been quite effective with his sinker right there. I think we saw a backdoor cutter for strike three looking, and he's used the changeup very effectively. I still wish he would feature that curveball that he was throwing in spring training. It was a very effective pitch. It was something he spent a lot of time with, and we just really haven't seen it consistently yet this year. Out toward right field, long run for Marlon Bird, and it's going to drop for a base hit. It'll be a ground rule double. So McGee is at second base. I wonder if Marlon had fielded that cleanly if it hadn't got into the crowd. If the fan had it interfered if he would have uh, been able to hold him to a single. No, that was going that way. Marlon's fan. Yeah. He's helping his cause. <laughs> and here's Marcelo Zuna. JB, that curveball, do you think it. He's still not confident enough with it to throw in a big league game. Is that what it is? That or? would be my guess. You know, it is, and a lot of times when you're learning a new pitch, you don't want to get beat on it. But still, I mean, there's situations where you can throw it first pitch as a get me over curveball. And I just haven't seen that um, consistently. Is another foul ball off his foot? <laughs> he was hopping around that. He fell the ball down. 
Looked like it was close to being off his foot again. No, that oh. one was off the shin. <laughs> it's going to have black and blues everywhere. No balls at one strike to Ozuna. He struck out his first time up. Last year, Kyle had a complete game against the Marlins in June. At that point, he was six and three with an ERA of 3.12. It was one of his better outings that we've seen during his career. Did he go? No, says Gary Cedarstrom. But since that time, Kyle's been roughed up somewhat. Four and 11 over that span since that complete game in June with an ERA of 5.72. Trying to keep this at a two run deficit here at the top of the third. Off the end of the bat and out of play. Two and two. I had a question for Jamie. I was watching, uh, and I don't know whether we'll have enough time here for him to answer me. We'll pick it up next inning, but I was watching a special on Carl Yastrzemski's career on. Uh, ESPN Classic this morning, and two times in the in the uh, in the piece, it showed him hitting, and it showed him to have to go down on his back, which he got thrown at twice. <laughs> and my question for Jamie is that part of the game back then was normal, but it has almost totally left the game today's generation. You're right. It is pretty much non existent. My feeling is the league has kind of taken it away because, you know, pitching inside, all of a sudden you hit somebody, it's up to the umpire to determine if they're throwing at them. And we've seen some ejections because of the umpires have misread it and, thought, and thrown guys out. And guys have debated it over and over the last few years if it will ever change and get back. So we'll see. Maybe we can talk more about it as we move along as we go to the bottom of the third. Marlon Bird against right hander Henderson Alvarez. Alvarez so far has allowed three hits. The Phillies have had a, have left five through the first two innings. Yeah, the first pitch to Utley on the inside corner. It's 0 1.
Chase walked his first time up. There have been two walks. The Phillies have walked 45 times already this year, which is tops in the National League. What on earth was that? That was a <laughs> ethos ball. That was a 58 mile an hour curveball. Where's Orlando Hernandez or Levon Hernandez? Whoop. Throw it again. Be interesting to see what happens. Tightens it up a little bit. And it's one and two. El Duque and Levon, they, they would throw that quite often during the course of a game. Bob Tewksbury, Bob Tewksbury had that same pitch as well. And you and it was very effective with it. Who's that guy uh, in the 70s, 80s? Dave LaRoche, didn't he used to throw the lalab they called mm -hmm. it in the American mm -hmm. League? Yeah, there's I don't mean to change the subject, but I, but I'm going to. There's been a lot of talk lately. I, I know you've heard it about speeding up games. Yeah. Things to do to speed up games. I'm watching Chase uh, back out of the box every pitch. Back out of the box every pitch. One of the proposed uh, new rules uh, over the next couple of years is going to be eliminating the batter being able to back out of the batter's box. You get one one back out per at bat. Really. Yeah. As a hitter, do you like that? It will speed up the game mm -hmm. as that ball goes foul. But I mean, it would speed up the game. I mean, Chase's at bat may take two or three minutes less if he had to stay in the batter's box. There was a couple of years ago where they had said they were going to try to enforce that a little bit more, but there, I don't think there was anything written about it in the rule book. So this will be something that they'll put in the rules where the umpires will try to emphasize it more and more. Well, I'm not sure about that, but I mean, in the discussion, there's that. There's widening the strike zone toward the book rule, and there's just a couple of little um, small points that you could add to the game to speed it up. Well, and what would happen if the hitter chose to go out a second or third time? It's an automatic strike? Yeah. Wow. They'd stay in the box. Yes, they would. And there'd be some bickering going on to, to lengthen the game. I guarantee you. Initially at least. 3 2 pitched out lead. And he lines that one off the glove and oh. into the bare hand of Jeff Baker. One out. Continues to hit the ball hard, I'll tell you that. I mean, you know, hit a lot of balls at people. There's seven fielders out there. If you keep keeping line drives every now and then they're gonna be at him. But he's staying in the chase is staying in the middle of the field. I mean, you, if you watch that, I mean, a couple doubles to left center, and when Chase is hot, that ball stays in the middle of the field. Not many hooked foul balls. Uses the entire field. That'll bring Ryan Howard up. He grounded out his first time up. He takes outside. It's one and zero. What I've noticed in this series, especially, he's seen a lot. Of, they've thrown him a lot of fastballs. I'm thinking you know, none of these pitches are easy to hit, but I got to believe that's the easiest to hit. That ball is well hit out toward left center, but Ozuna out toward the track to the wall. It's gone! Ryan Howard, an opposite field home run, has made this a one run game. Second home run of the year. It's 2 1 Marlins on top. Jamie, you want to comment on that home run? Well, I'm going to first say <laughs> one of your keys today was Ryan House. Right. So kudos to you on that one. And the other part is kudos to Ryan to hit that ball to left center field. Well, if you look out at the flag track there, you see a little breeze yep. blowing in the same direction oh. that ball was hit. But we all know when Ryan Howard's starting to get heat up and get right, that's where he's placing the ball. If he, it's yeah. not out of the ballpark, it's still in that direction. He's the only missing piece to the puzzle right now. Uh, Marlon Bird's got some big hits. Dominic has. Carlos is doing okay. We can get Ryan Howard hot, especially with the Braves coming in, right? Absolutely. And the way Ozuna was going back on it, he pointed about the wind. It looked like he was sizing it up, and it just kind of took off. And it means that Ted Weagle of Brookhaven, Pennsylvania, has just won $100 thanks to the McDonald's home run jackpot. There's a liner out towards center. That's going to drop for a hit. I'll say it again. 
When you watch our hitters, if you see a lot of balls being hit in the middle of the field, we're scoring runs. We're hitting good. You see a lot of balls hooked and grounded out and rolled over. It's just the opposite. Marlon reminds me a little of Tony Perez back in the day. You know how he used to keep the ball in the center of the field, hit the ball to right center. Fantastic guy to have behind your big hitter in your lineup. Well, Dominic Brown now up. He struck out his last time up. And he fouls it off. It's no balls in one strike. And we've talked about that how. Phillies were searching for somebody that could eventually bat behind Howard or Howard can bat behind if they bat him fifth against the lefty. And there was debate on who it would be, but I think it was pretty early in spring training. We kind of knew it was going to be Marlon Byrd. Two to Dominic Brown. Yeah, that ball had a lot of sink to it. 92. Almost looked like a changeup with his kid's velocity. Ball ran out of the bottom of the zone. Dominic chased it. He does have the ability, the ability to vary his velocity on his fastball. He went according to the home plate umpire, and there are two outs. Jamie. Kind of maybe a weird question. See if you can answer it. One mile per hour on a fastball. What would that equate to in terms of distance traveled? Oh wow, that's beyond. Me. I'm not a physics major. You didn't take physics in St. No, Joseph's. I, I, I mean, like, like a guy throws say 91, and another guy throws 96, and there's still five miles an hour difference. What's the reaction time for the hitter? The difference in reaction well, time. I mean, with these guys, it's probably a lot because they see so many balls. I mean, for the average person, it probably wouldn't be a whole lot. But for these guys that are seeing pitches constantly in batting practice in the cage, and have the ability to use a pitching machine that where they can turn it up, right? You know, really high. You know. It, it probably isn't a whole lot. I got to believe for yourself it wasn't either. If you had a guy, you know, back in when you played, what was the top end velocity? 92. 93? I don't know that we even knew what it was right. because but, uh, they had a they had a jugs gun back then, but the, the, you know, pitcher pitchers miles per hour velocity was not an issue. I think it's interesting. I would love to know what Nolan Ryan was clocked at. Back then, and mm -hmm. compared to today, I think the other thing too, if you vary velocity, depending on the size of the pitcher too, and how, you know, how much their extension is to yeah. the plate, that might add to it a little bit too. Well, the you know, you got a tall guy with long legs. He's obviously going to be closer to home plate with releasing the ball than a short guy. Broke his bat and a base hit to center field. Birds are out second. He'll hold up there. And the A base is now two for two. Well, for that home run by Ryan Howard, for each one hit by a Phillies player this season, one tree will be planted by the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society as part of Home Runs for Trees, a partnership between the Phillies, PHS, and Aramark. Home Run for Trees is part of Plant One Million, a project to restore the region's tree coverage. For more info, visit phillies.com slash red goes green. My point with that question was like there's got to be a number is it 91 is it 93 is it 97 where the batter must. Have fastball on his mind. You know what I mean well you can't adjust to the off speed pitch without looking fast. Do you have a number in, in mind that like for you I there? don't know because I don't know what pitchers threw back then but I, I could. You know I, I had no chance of hitting Nolan Ryan's curveball. Because you were just, you were looking because I had to, I had to guard guard against the fastball. That is interesting though that because it seems like it's such a short period of time ago that we have all this technology we see all these different things that you didn't know velocity that often you knew a guy threw hard but you didn't know specific numbers they didn't talk about it. Well, Jamie, you, James, you told him, you, I mean we played against each other mm -hmm. I mean in, in the early going in your career the first three or four years when we faced each other there wasn't much talk about. Velocity. No, nobody well, done. Actually, actually, it was kept from you. Yeah. It was kind of a secret. You know, it wasn't. 
you know, like today, it's you know we got a board yeah. up here. You Pitch count on you, the board. You can go on the internet. You can find velocity anywhere you want. I wonder if it would be better if you didn't know. Even if you learned how to pitch. You know, as a youngster, not worrying about velocity. Exactly, but I think what happens with the hitters, the, the guys that are learn to hit that high end velocity, they learn a swing to a velocity, and I and I say that because I think the Yankees and Derek Jeter do that a lot. They have a guy that sits in the stands and he gives him hand signs as he's on deck to velocity, mm. and he goes up and I guarantee you he has a swing to you know if a guy's throwing 91 versus 96. Wow, you know he's now prepared, and it's the same guy with the same gun every time, and I think that plays to an advantage. The first time we ever were aware of the gun was the guy at Dodger Stadium that stood behind. Right. Uh, he became sort of a character. A himself. Francisco Valenzuela's uh, agent or something. Yeah, he's standing with the gun with it. Was uh, Rito? Yeah. Had one of Sarge's hats on. He had one of Sarge's <laughs> hats before they were Sarge's hats. <laughs> Jim said enough about Cody Ashey too. He's a fantastic young man. It's going to be a big, big, important call in the Phillies' future. And he's down looking at strikes here to wrap up the third. He thought that ball was a little in tight. Three strikeouts for Alvarez. Ryan Howard though puts the Phillies on the board. A home run to left center field. Pretty good shot. We've completed our first three. We go to the fourth inning here in Philadelphia. It's a two-one game. Office supply delivery. WB Mason same day service can't be thrown out. Call by 11:30 and your order is delivered that same afternoon. Who but WB Mason? And we go to the top of the fourth inning here at Citizens Bank Park. Phillies have made it a one-run ball game for Kyle Kendrick. Kendrick will face Baker, Mathis, and then the pitcher spot. Phillies trying to sweep out the Marlins. Marlins have uh, lost six consecutive games. Including the Phillies win last night, the home run by Rollins at the bottom of the tenth inning. Well, the other thing, Mike, getting back to your question about pitching inside, you know, I think it's kind of a lost art. I don't think there is there is many strikes inside, and you know, we talk about or it was talked about this winter and this spring about you know pitchers getting hit and wearing hats and protective hats and all that, and I think a lot of that is because. The game is so much all out over the plate and if we were allowed or they called more strikes consistently inside more guys pitched inside and you could pitch inside for a purpose. I think it would potentially take away some of that aggression on the ball away and you wouldn't be seeing guys get get hit. I mean it still could happen but you wouldn't see it as you know it's, it's starting to become a little more commonplace and even if they don't get hit in the head they're going to hit it on the body. But what we've gotten away from pitching inside, and we've gotten away from strikes being called inside, and we've, and as you said, Mike, you know, earlier in, in you know in your career, 
they're you know guys knock guys down knock them on their backs and you don't see that anymore and baseball's kind of taken that away because of the fighting and the brawls and the things like that so they're trying to protect the players and some of that's the money that's being paid for guys and they don't want the injuries and things like that that come from it so but to me ultimately it's it's that line drive coming back to the pitcher and they're con so concerned about giving them a helmet or something call more consistent strikes inside and and I think spending more time working on pitches on the inner part of the plate I think will change some of that. There's Jeff Mathis after the fifth strikeout for Kendrick and he takes this outside one ball and no strikes. Why do you think they stopped calling the inside. I mean, is there you have a theory on it. Either one of you guys. I, I don't think there's as many strikes in there. OK. I really don't. So it's and as much the pitchers as the umpire then. Yeah. And I'm not saying that the umpires are wrong but if pitchers don't pitch in there you don't practice in there and you're not as consistent in there. Inside two and one to Mathis. Uh, my one comment I might have is the umpires generally set up with their eyes over the inside corner so they get a really really good uh, look at the ball inside and the ball outside of course not nearly as good a look at it. And you got it you got to know that I mean there are sliders across the outside corner just off the plate fastballs away that hey they're basically making a guess mm -hmm. right. Educated guess, right. experienced well, guess, you know, but and it's I'm not like the inside corner. They actually see that ball. And yeah. I'm not faulting the umpires. They're out there giving it their best effort. But you know, go back to the balloon. Remember the balloon yeah, the umpires sure. used to have, and let them get you know get wherever they need to get. Oh wow! What wow. a grab by Kyle Kender. Oh, his we'll see that racing. Right yeah. So that's exactly what we're talking about right there. That, that, that was about as timely, based upon your comments. As wow. It, as a as a batted ball could be, folks plan on seeing that uh, on some TV station around the, <laughs> around the country for the next week. And it's that ball. He didn't catch that ball. That ball caught him. And it's just it's self defense. Oh. How lucky is, is Kyle? I mean, again, it's self defense, and you can't practice this. But wow. fortunately, he got that his glove like up. face high, right? Yeah. Fortunately, he got his glove up and, and caught that ball. Take a listen and look. Oh. Wow. I mean, think about it. You, you can't. You can see that and see how he reacts, but you can't think about reacting there. Now, are they visiting the mound to make sure he's not too sh shaken up over that? Or <laughs> I wonder if the, oh. even the, the ball hit the hand or if he twisted something. I, I think more so just to give him a breather. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you've had that happen. Watch this as he comes up. It's like he's uh, saying a little prayer. <laughs> oh, he probably caught it right in the pocket. Yeah. His left, his left hand's uh, swollen up. That's pretty good athletic reaction there, Jamie. I know that you've probably had that a few times. Not quite that close to my face, but I've gotten hit a couple times, and I've heard a couple balls whiz by me that I never was able to react to. Really, and that's a scary thing. You know, I tell people, people talk about. I've had people conversation with people about it, and I mean, you'll see this again. Where I mean, it's just it's just a reaction. There's no thought there. What that's, do you think that is? A tenth of a second? It's it's not much. It's not much. But it's impressive. But you, you know, I've woken up in the middle of the night so many times with a ball right in front of me, sweating. That's remarkable. Henderson Alvarez, the batter. Ground ball over to third, and it's off the glove of Ashy. And then Alvarez takes a big turn around first. See how they score that one. I tell you how I think sometimes that's not the worst thing in the world. You get the leadoff man to clear this inning. So yeah, you know if you can get the leadoff man out here, and then you start the next inning with the two hole hitter. Pitcher has to run around the bases on a warm afternoon. <laughs> but he's 23. <laughs> Still has to run. Well, Yelich is one for two. He reached on error. They have scored that a base hit for Alvarez. Just a bit inside. Oh, 
I say that because I was going along with the umpire, but it did look like a pretty good pitch. To your point on pitching inside, now Kendrick is a guy, and my 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 question was really more related to pitching up and inside. He he probably throws 50 percent of his pitches inside. But there's there's no uncomfortability. No 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 with no no, the no. no one's moving Nobody's their head. No one's moving their front shoulder. They're just kind of jumping back. Uh, and I think that's what you were referring yeah. to. There's no uncomfortable at bats. Exactly. Three balls, no strikes to Yelich. Runner at first. And there's a strike. It's three one. By the way, the uh, we've gone through the reaction time of that line drive. It's less than a second. Once the ball, less than half a second. Once wow. the ball left the bat. Look at that. Look. You don't think that Nieves thought that was right there? He held that for a little while. <laughs> Washington Nationals will be here for the first time in 2014. And it will be on Friday, May 2nd, Saturday the 3rd, then Sunday the 4th, which is a special time. It's a 305 start. StubHub Mother's Appreciation Day. Ladies' hat, free to women 15 and older. Order now and Phillies.com for that series against the, the Nationals. Nationals are trailing the Braves today, 6 to 1 in the 5th. And now Echeverria up for the third time. Owen won the count. I know I ask this all the time, but Nieves is probably saying something to the home plate umpire at some point, right? About he didn't have to pitches. say much uh, if he holds the ball right there for a couple of seconds. <laughs> Jamie, important for that catcher to develop a good rapport with that umpire. Isn't oh, it? it's huge. It's huge. And that starts as you run out to the home plate area pregame. It's always usually starts with a hello and you know there's a lot there can be some banter, there's some some questioning, but it's important. I think that's a lost art in the game too. What schmoozing? As that ball gets away uh, from the you know I'm not even gonna call it schmoozing. <laughs> it's just trying to create a rapport. I'm looking back over at bats here at Treveria in four nine. Uh, twelve at bats. Eleven of the twelve at bats. Uh, and there was a walk in there. So ten of the eleven at bats he put the ball in play fastballs. This series. Again, it gets away from the A base, but again, not far enough. It's two and two. Well, there's someone over there in the on deck circle that might have an effect on that. Yeah, John Carlos Stanton in the on deck circle. Well, but the two previous games he hit in the eight hole. Oh. And whereas you'd probably get more off, more soft stuff. You would think anyway. Well, you're being pitched to. Right. In most cases, because but you're still the he's still finding the and, fastball, right? And if you and if you need to pitch around, knowing that the pitcher is hitting in the nine hole, it just depends on the situation. I mean, we talk about it with Carlos in the two hole. You know, he's getting a lot more fastballs because of who's behind him. Over to third. This will be a tough play if it stays fair. It's going to kick foul. Would that have stayed fair on the turf, Mike? No. No. Spinning. Yeah, it has some kind of a spin when it hits. It kicks to the left. The high chopper does. That's where you come in if it does is going to stay fair. Barehand it, pump fake the first, and throw it around the back to the shortstop. <laughs> <laughs> when the runner comes around third, you think that pitcher's not going to round third? Seventy eight pitches for Kendrick with two outs here in the fourth.
And now the runners will be off again. There were two outs when he allowed the infield hit off the glove of Ashy, and then the walk to Yelich. Eight three ball counts for Kyle Kendrick. Swig and a miss. He got him with the off speed pitch. Side is retired. Six strikeouts for Kendrick. No runs, one hit. And two men left. Middle of the fourth. Kyle will lead it off when we come back. Stores go further by AT&T mobilizing your world and by the Pennsylvania Lottery benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. Bottom of the fourth inning it's 2 1 Marlins are on top Kyle Kendrick is due to lead it up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy Murph. All right guys we'll uh, give you some, an update on AJ Burnett uh, who was uh, injured in his last start uh, left his last start early because he felt a tweak in that groin. Well the good news is today he threw a bullpen session and for the most part said he felt very good. You're taking a look at that bullpen session right now. He said he he felt the tweak with two of his pitches but after that it kind of went away and that was only when he was pitching from this stretch but he is going to have an ultrasound done tomorrow just to make sure there's not a hernia there. Uh, that's his only slight concern but he said he felt pretty good and he's hoping they'll get good news tomorrow and be able to make his next start. That's certainly what the Phils are hoping as well guys. All right Murphy uh, Ryan Sandberg was happy to see him in that bullpen as Baker makes a nice backhanded play and Kendrick is safe at first as that ball gets away from Garrett Jones. Now they'll score that a base hit for Kyle Kendrick. So the leadoff single and Tony Gwynn is coming up. Stay in the middle of the field. A lot of hits up that middle. Mike, I got a question for you. Early in your career, as you came up to the big leagues as a young player, what were some of the bigger things that you had to adjust to from the minor leagues to the big leagues? Well, first of all, I couldn't hit a breaking ball when I first came up. There's a lot of guys like that, though. Yeah. I could hit a fastball and pretty much hit it to left field, but I had no sense for. You know my, my hitting pattern was. Let's say from second base around to the third base dugout. <laughs> and. Um, the one big adjustment I had to make was. Uh, learning to use the whole field and I really didn't make that adjustment until. About 76 77. To the right side Baker will go to second and get the lead runner. And there's one out. Wynn will take over at first. Had to adjust to booing. It was a tough adjustment. Had to learn to accept that. How long did that take? 17 years. <laughs> um, Would you have responded like Jimmy Rollins did last night? He said he was being heckled by a fan, and that's why he hit the home run to win the game. Probably not. I probably wouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> 
Probably wouldn't have the carefree attitude enough to say that. That's a good comeback. Rollins is 0 for 2. He's lined out. He's also grounded out. That one's off the end of the bat softly towards second. There's one and two in time. It's a 4 6 3 double play. And the side is retired. It's a pretty quick inning for Henderson Alvarez. The Phillies do get a hit, but they don't leave anybody. We'll go to the fifth here in Philadelphia. Time now for our W.B. Mason delivery of the game, and we think back to the last time Mike Schmidt hit a walk-off home run, September 10, 1985, against Tim Burke of the Expos. And this won the ball game, of course, for the Phillies, and it's uh, apropos based on what Jimmy Rollins did last night with his solo home run. Von Hayes won some well. They were both on the base paths and were both there to greet Schmidt as he came across the plate. Glenn Wilson was there, too. And that is our W.B. Mason delivery of the game as Stanton takes inside. Is there anything sweeter than winning a ball game with a home run no, like that? No, that's, uh, that's pretty sweet. I can remember three in my career. Three, three walk-offs. And, and they were not big celebrations back then. He didn't notice the whole team at home plate, right? Yeah, the, there's a few guys there. There wasn't the entire team, though. Did they all make the about face and head up to the locker room? I guess. It is, you know, uh, we have our celebrations pretty much behind closed doors back then. We didn't want to let anybody see us overdoing it. <laughs> want to show up the pitcher. Well, you had 15 walk-off hits, 10, really? 10 walk-off home runs. Serious. That's what we're, we're talking about home runs at one games or like bottom of the ninth. End of the game. You're kidding. That's right. Wow. How soon we forget. <laughs> so you remember three of those 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now Jimmy Rollins got a whipped cream pie yesterday at the end of the game. Did that ever happen to you? No. <laughs> no. They ever dump any Gatorade on top of you or anything like no. that? No. No. What'd you guys do for fun? We didn't. <laughs> we... <laughs> There's the 2 2 to Stanton. And he pulls it foul. And it remains 2 at 2. No. Uh, we didn't do anything back then to. In general, uh, draw attention to ourselves or show up the opposition. And we figured it was hard enough to play the game without people on the other side not liking it. Out toward left field, Dominic Brown and makes the catch. It sunk right on into his glove. One out here in the fifth inning. Well, oh, the other thing, I got to believe back in those times when you played. There wasn't a lot of fraternization. Well, there there was an umpire that uh, at some point during my career, I forget when it was, but they assigned an umpire to pregame fraternization, and then you know they'd scream at you if you went over to the other side to visit the opposing team. You know, so they worked on preventing 
especially when the gates were open, any fraternization exactly. between teams. But there's some serious fraternization. Oh my! <laughs> that ball's hit well, deep to right field. Marlon Bird's going back, and that one is gone. Garrett Jones, his first home run of the year, makes it a 3-1 ball game. He took the first pitch and pulled it right on out of the yard. Jones's fourth hit overall against Kyle Kendrick in his career. Jamie, they call that ambushing a fastball, do they not? Yes, it is. And you know you're going to get one sooner or later, and he hadn't gotten many earlier with men on base. And throws him a first pitch fastball here. It's pretty much centered for him. Center cut. Garrett Jones does what he has the ability to do drive the ball out of the ballpark. Well, now with one out and a run across, Casey McGee, who's two for two, he is singled, he's doubled. And yeah. that's what happens when you throw a first pitch changeup. After that fastball? Yep. A little spinner. Over toward Ryan Howard. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And by Toyota. Toyota's number one for everyone sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. And I necessarily wasn't questioning the pitch there. It's the location of the pitch. You have to throw first pitch fastballs, but if it's a low ball hitter, Stan Williams used to always say throw it lower than low. If he's a low ball hitter, he's going to swing at it because he likes the ball down. The thought is get it out of the zone where he likes it, but just yep. have to see if he'll chase you yeah. below the zone. Azuna has struck out twice, both times swinging. I always wondered, Jamie, how you pitchers were at the local carnival with the dunk tank or the, <laughs> the, the milk bottle stacked up. Well, that's usually a little closer than 60 feet 6 <laughs> inches. You weren't, weren't walking away with many stuffed animals? No. no. When you get in that range, then you're, you're kind of messing with us. So you just take like 20 feet, take a walk back like 20 <laughs> feet. <laughs> Phillies festivals coming up. We've had the dunk tank there a few different times. Yeah. We can have that again and see if you're able to target anybody. Well, it's maybe when you're a kid and doing it, it depends how cute the girl is with you. <laughs> Off the end of the bat to right field, Marlon Bird side winds in. Side is retired, but a home run by Garrett Jones with one out here in the fifth inning has extended the Marlins' lead back to two. It's three to one as we go to the bottom of the fifth.
answer. All right, guys, I know you've written down some answers. Let's uh, give you the question one more time. What Phillies player on this date in 1955 saw his club record consecutive game streak end at 730? What do you guys think? I'm going to let Mike take this one. Now, you've written down two names. 55, I don't know. Well, I wrote down Granny Hamner and Chuck Klein. Um, I'll go with Hamner. That horn means that you did not get the, the answer correct. <laughs> this is not going to surprise you. Jamie goes with Chuck Klein. Well, this is not going to surprise you who the answer is. This is a guy that was near and dear to your... Richie. That's right. So you I know, your, you know your statues, you fellow statue guys. <laughs> Jay Sutley hits one right through the middle of base hit. I know one thing I know. Chase hit the swinging early in the count. I mean, I know he's taken the first pitch uh, fastball first strike once in this game, but I think he swung the 2 and 0 fastball, and there's the first ball fastball, ground ball up the middle. A little bit more aggressive right now. He's getting a lot of fastballs, and he's taking advantage of it. Well, Howard homered his last time up. Let's see if he could do something here. He's four for 17 of this homestand with that home run. I don't think this should come as a surprise, but they are really deep on him in center field and left field. Probably because of this swing right here back in the third. Hmm. Run of the day so far for the Phillies. Off the glove of Mathis. And it's 2 0. Oh. This is a predicament for the pitcher right here, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's pretty much lived with his fastball. I'm guessing a fastball here. But it's well, it's all about location. Time is called and Alvarez steps off. When you get a chance, give me a call on that orange glove. Picture has. You know, the, I, I was just thinking the same thing how bright it is out there. There is that fastball and it's at the knees, it's two and one. I know it's Fernandez used one as well. On Friday. Remember the only pitcher the Phillies had in recent years, Jose Mesa. He used the red glove at home and I think the blue glove on the road. You got a match. You've got to accessorize in this day and age, Mike. <laughs> Out of play, and it's two and two. As a hitter, Mike, give us a, a thought on I mean Howard's had these two leg injuries these last few years. How Damaging that is to a guy that hits home runs. I mean, did you ever have any major leg injuries that would diminish your power? Well, I've had, I had five knee operations. Uh, I guess three of them early in my life. Howard's down, looking on strikes for one out. But I never really had uh, sort of debilitating issues with my legs. Uh, but I do know that if one of my knees was swollen or I had tweaked the knee or something, it was, you knew it was going to be a problem turning on the ball. You, you need your lower half. Your lower half needs to be strong. Uh, and that probably is an issue with Ryan. I mean, time will tell this year uh, if he can get it out of his mind. But, yeah, when you're, when you're creating the bat speed that he is and um, – he doesn't stride much, but I would think pushing off of that back foot, and I believe it's his back foot with the Achilles was the problem. Correct. Yep. Marlin hits a high fly ball to left field. And then Yelich wandering out there makes the one headed catch for the second out. So Utley goes back to first, and that'll leave it for Dominic Brown. They just missed that one.
quick trip out to the mound by Jeff Mathis. Dominic has struck out twice. Once to end the first, and then the other time came in the third. So up here with Dudley over at first, he let off the inning with a single on the first pitch. At the knees, it's 0 and 1. As we get into this at bat, at just the point is uh, I was checking the newsy notes earlier on today. Chase has the highest percentage of stolen bases uh, in all of baseball. To pick his spot. Over toward the left side through the hole, base hit for Dominic Brown. The other thing about Chase with his knee, I mean, he does run fairly well, and when his knees were bothering him, he wasn't able to do it as much. That's why you can see that he's healthy because he's moving all, all over the place. That's good hitting by Dominic, uh, hitting that ball the other way on the ground. But for me, Jamie, two outs, you're the tying run. You hit how many home runs last year? 26? 27, yep. 26, 27. Wouldn't I would expect him to understand that in that at bat, looking for a ball middle in, something hard middle in, and, and getting a couple of swings uh, that might tie this ball game up would be better than poking the ground ball single to left field. Now, two strikes would be a different story. Well, I noticed with him, uh, with Dominic this year, that he's been pitched away a lot. And he has learned to hit the ball the other way. That one is uh, down the right field line. Is it going to stay fair? It's a fair ball. Go to the corner. Ugly will score. Here comes Brown. He's being waved home. The throw went over the head of the cutoff man, and Brown slides in safely. A two run double for Will Nieves. He said he loves day baseball. Getting a chance to play here today. He's tied it up at three. A real nice hitting with two outs and two men on by Nieves. Like I said, poking that ball to left field was key. <laughs> well, it's interesting. In Will's at bats, he hasn't seen a whole lot of pitches, but he's seen every pitch but one pitch he's seen today has been a fastball. You know, we mentioned that the ball went over the head of the first cutoff man. I think it was supposed to go to the first one. Oh yeah, yeah. There would have been a close play at home too if he if he hit the cutoff man. Well, give the Avis some credit. He hasn't played all that much because obviously Ruiz is playing every day. He was talking yesterday. He goes, I'll play tomorrow, and I think there's a chance I'll play on Thursday afternoon because it's a day game. And I might even play on Sunday. So three times in seven days, he said, that's going to be good. <laughs> so they'll walk Ashy intentionally. So Kendrick will bat where the runners on first and second. Well, and seeing how he handles the pitchers, you know, that's not an issue. I'm sure you know having the ability to get a couple hits here is going to help Will's confidence, but it's also going to help Ryan's confidence in throwing him back out there. Not that Ryan hasn't. Doesn't have the confidence to put him out there, but knowing that hey, Will can put the bat on the ball, he can move runners around, and he got a big hit right there. I mean, that's that's huge, not only for Will and Ryan, but the bottom of the lineup and and ultimately the Phillies. Yep. Kendrick reached on an infield hit his first uh, his last time up. And it's 0-1. Phillies now with 10 hits today. They have three runs on 10 hits. So they have had opportunities. They left seven in the first three innings. Stanton's throw. It certainly wasn't the same kind of throw we saw the other night when he nailed the runner at the bay at the plate. A little he's rubbing that, that muscle there. Mm. I think he's had to make three or four uh, aggressive throws in this series. Well, he made one to third base last night. 
you know, when he's trying to get Rollins, and he has mm -hmm. that wrap on the arm. A lot of times, guys wear that wrap to keep the arm, Jamie, loose, warm. Warm. Yeah. Yep. A heck of an athlete. Hmm. Didn't he play his first game here a couple years ago? His first game, yes. Um, and he's progressively gotten bigger, which you would expect of his age. Jamie, we were sit watching him. He was standing next to Jamie the other day. <laughs> and, I mean, just watching him stand next to you, he, he's a mountain of a man. Yeah. And you're not a short guy. He, d he dwarfed me. <laughs> but a very pleasant guy to talk to. I really enjoyed the conversation. Two balls and two strikes to Kendrick with runners on first and second. That time is called. Had you ever pitched him? <laughs> oh, I was wishing you weren't going to ask that question. <laughs> you should have got the video. Why didn't you give me a little nudge and say, don't ask that question? <laughs> Remember that Budweiser rooftop that you were talking about here? That's why uh, he kind of hit one out there toward that against Jamie in, in Miami last well, year. He actually broke the scoreboard ago. two years ago oh, yeah. in Miami off of me. Swing and a miss. Kendrick is struck out. Side is retired. Two runs scored, though, on a two run double by Will Nieves. He's three for three, sparking the Phil's offense. We're tied up as we go to the top of the sixth inning here in Philly. Philly of the week is just getting started on his 12th career season with the Bills. Out of spring training and into the fire, Chase has come out pounding the ball to start the 2014 campaign. In just the first week, his two home runs, a 458 average, 11 hits, and five for extra bases, including his 300th career double, is the exact production Ryan Sandberg is looking for from Utley's location in the lineup. The chase for success has started early, and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, some of the activities, the fanatic dancing uh, in between innings here at Citizens Bank Park. Kyle Kendrick has watched as uh, his offense has tied this ball game up at three as we go to the top of the sixth inning. It'll be Jeff Baker, Jeff Mathis in the pitcher's spot uh, for the Marlins. You guys enjoying yourself so far? Our I'm first Sunday with Schmidt. I'm having a blast. And I, I got another question for you, Mike. <laughs> Go ahead. Remember, I got a mouthful of pretzels. <laughs> April 1976. Uh, you hit uh, was it 11 home runs and four in a row in Chicago. I believe it was 12. Okay. Come on, in Jamie. Get your, Sorry, Jamie. Get your facts. Well, straight. it was a tweet that was sent in, <laughs> and so I just thought I'd throw Not it out that there. I was counting. Tell us what that was. That's, that's so. What's that, your question? Well, what's it, what's that feel like <laughs> to have a month like that? That is a month. I think for some it, guys, I, that's a career. I think it was a record for a while, but I don't think it is anymore. Yeah, a pretty good April. It's kind of what we were talking about before with Utley. You were saying that you know, I was saying how good that is that he's off to the start he is. But that that's a pretty good way to begin your season when you're hitting that many home runs. Two balls, no strikes to Jeff Baker. Now Beat those Cubs eight. 14 to 13 that day. 
And then the, the great thing about that game was that we won 51 out of our next 63 games. That is a remarkable run. That's getting something done. Yeah. yeah. It's like the way the Tigers began in 84, the way they jumped out. Somebody will probably tweet that, that that's not true, but that's <laughs> the number that's in my head. There's the 3 1 pitch to Baker. Swing and a miss. It's three balls and two strikes. Well, there was something about Wrigley Field and you. you. You had to see that ball pretty well there. I mean, all the home runs you hit there. A lot of high flies that blew and blew and blew and dropped in the basket, right, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> then the wind taketh away every now and then, too, right? That's right. That's exactly right. That particular day, it's nice April 19th, I think you said, 8 mm. Just a soft breeze kind of blown out, straight out. Out of play again, it remains three balls and two strikes. Not to dwell on that day. <laughs> As I am. <laughs> you, you brought Go it up ahead. though. Yeah, no, that was right the ahead. Rick Russell and Paul Russell. Three of them. Oh, yeah. Two up a Rick, one off of Paul, and a guy named Garmin. Mike Garmin, I think. Yeah. Rick and Paul Russell. Now, Paul didn't have the same career Rick had, uh, but the, you know, still was a decent pitcher. Rick was around for a long time. Out of play again. It remains three and two. Mr. Kendrick just entered triple figures, 101 pitches. And Tom, you talk about you know you ask guys. You remember any guys you hit home runs off of? I mean, Mike's just rattled them off. <laughs> Can you rattle them all off? <laughs> How many did you hit off of me? Quite a few. I, I don't know. You might know. I, 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 would, I don't. I, I, I would guess I had one, one in there somewhere. No, you have one that's still going. Shallow fly ball left center field. Rollins backpedaling. And he makes the catch. Well, let's go back to April 17, 1976. This is what we were talking about. There's one that was against, that was against Rick. Yeah. Yep. And that one, not into the basket. That one was out of the yard. Boom. That's Rick again. Now, that one just got over. No, not really. Boom. There's number three. <laughs> There's that one you're talking out away from you, huh? Yeah. Wow. Now I think that's Paul. That's Paul Russell right there. That was the. There's the basket. There you go. In the basket. <laughs> it's not to it. dwell on that game, but. <laughs> I used Tony Taylor's bat that day. Did you really? How much lighter was it than your bat? Or was it? About the same. Was it? No oh, one pitch to Mathis. Inside one ball and one strike. And that hitter jumped back there. Did you see that? Yeah. Game? Moving somebody's feet. All time home run leaders against the Cubs Willie Mays, 92, Hank Aaron, 87, Schmidt, Mel Otten, stand the man. I got to ask you, you ever get a ball up here? I've had one up here that I remember. Um, Never, I, I've never had one in the radio booth, which is just to the left of us, but just one, and it was right near where Jamie was sitting, sort of in that area. I think Sarge caught it on one hop or something. There was something. That's odd. It might have been the first ball he ever caught. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Sarge, if you're listening. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. That was like a 45 footer. He was trying to get him to reach with two strikes. Actually, it was a curveball. His first curveball of the day. And that's where we've seen his curveball during the regular season is in front of the plate. It hasn't been, you know, well, has it made it to the plate as much as we saw in spring training? Well, I will say it's kind of tough to break out a curveball to first pitch in the sixth inning of a game. Our crack research, research staff has told us in 27 career at bats, Jamie, you allowed two home runs to Mike. Wow. 
One at Wrigley, one at Veterans Stadium, right? 12 for 27. Yeah. That's <laughs> all right. I was young and dumb and green. There's ball four. 10 three ball count for Kendrick. The way I look at it, too, you're a young. You know, I was a young pitcher, and, and that's how you learn. You, you learn through the, the experiences that you go through. And sometimes they're tough, tough lessons to learn. There's BJ Rosenberg throwing in the bullpen. He got the win in last night's ball game, pitched a scoreless inning. Alvarez bunts back toward the mound. Yeah, there are two outs. One four on the put out. And that'll bring Yelich to the plate. Yelich up for the fourth time. He reached on an error in the first. Single homer run in the second. Walked in the fourth. So the change up 0 and 1. Actually, the Phillies have Rosenberg at the pen. They also have Luis Garcia, who's now available in the pen. He was added to the roster today. Justin DeFreitas was sent to, to Lehigh Valley. Pretty good chance the Phillies will activate Mike Adams tomorrow. And they'll have to make another move out of their pen. 0 and 2 to Yelich. And that one is a foul ball in and out of the glove of Will Nieves. And Nieves pounded his glove after he missed that one. Jamie's at 114 pitches right now. What uh, I mean, do, do you know as a pitcher when you get to that stage in a game? Uh, I mean, you have a pretty good idea where you are pitch count wise. Uh, I think a lot of it's just you. You may feel it in your body. You know, I don't know that Kyle was under a lot of duress today, but he's as Tom said earlier, he's had a lot of three ball counts. He's thrown a lot of pitches. And a called strike three. Finally got that two seamer on the inside part of the plate. And he got the home plate up part to fight on it. No runs, no hits, one bat left in scoring position. Kendrick's day is most likely done as we go to the bottom of the sixth here at Philly.
Mercy Hospital. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW for an appointment. Buy Delaware Valley Honda. Visit your local Delaware Valley Honda dealer or shophonda.com. And buy McDonald's. I'm loving it. On a warm afternoon here in Philadelphia. Phillies and the Marlins tied at three as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Then Jimmy Rollins, or excuse me, Tony Gwynn will lead it off. Tony is two for three today. He's four for 11 in this series, getting a chance to start all three games for the Phils. And now trying to get things rolling. And he lines that one back through the middle of base hit. First pitch swinging. I think the approach this entire series has been very good for the Phillies offense. Keeping a lot, I keep saying it, a lot of balls in the middle of the field. When you see that, they're they're cranking as an offense. The greatest leadoff hitter of all time, T. Rose. He'd attack a first ball fastball, you know, at this point in the game. Did it a lot. Rollins is 0 for 3. He's lined out, he's grounded out, he's hit it to a double play. Change up outside, one ball, no strikes. A lot of the series, you know, we saw the Brewers be so aggressive offensively in that three game sweep. It's almost as if the Phillies saw that and said, you know what, we got to change our approach because they are, they have been a little more aggressive, it seems, than they were in that Brewers series. That ball is ripped toward right, and Stanton will make the catch. But I also will say, too, They've seen three power arms yeah. as starting pitchers who are, you know, three guys that are very proud and have good fastballs. So they came in prepared for what they were facing or what they were going to see, and they've made some nice adjustments. Excellent point. Excellent pitch is all very similar. Fernandez throws more fastballs and is known more for the upper 90s fastball, but the last night and tonight, these two guys can get it at 97, 98 every now and then themselves. Yeah, compared to last year when we fully saw Alvarez, uh, I, I'm with you, Jay. I, I think he's using that fastball more and using it effectively too. Yep. And, uh, and that's really what's kept his pitch count down. He's at uh, 81 pitches for the game. Threw a no-hitter back on September 29th last year. It was the 282nd no-hitter in baseball. He had three hitters reach on errors. He walked one. He hit one. And it was a scoreless game going to the bottom of the ninth inning. There was a pretty good chance he was done if the Marlins hadn't scored, and they scored on a wild pitch to win the game. One nothing. Oh, and I say 81 pitches. I don't count the four pitches for the intentional walk. Mm -hmm. To me, that's not a real pitch. Utley slaps it the other way. That's going to be in for a base hit. Gwynn's got good speed. He's going to get the third easily. And Utley will get to second. Now they're going to wave Tony Gwynn home. Here's the throw to the plate by Echeverria. He is out at home plate. I did not see if Yelich bobbled it. And if he did, that's why Pete McCannon figured, all right, we'll, we'll take a chance, whether it was the right one or not. Echeverria made a good throw to the plate to now Tony Gwynn. Now Sandberg is wondering, did Mathis block the plate before he had the ball? That is, you know, one of those things that baseball is trying to juggle right now, whether he's in front of the plate blocking it before the throw arrives. He can't be in that spot. There's the bobble. And where is he? He's in front of the plate, boys. He does not have the ball. his body in front of the plate. He had his left leg in front of the plate. Yeah, he's he doesn't have the ball, and he's in front of the plate. Well, there's two issues at play here. It took two perfect relay throws it to did. get him at home plate. Uh, he's a fast runner, there's no question. On the other side of the coin, there's one out, and you really don't lose anything by holding him if there's any doubt with one out. No outs or one out. Uh, Two outs a different story. You want to take a shot at scoring and if it takes two perfect throws. So a couple schools of thought on that play. Well Ryan Sandberg is now in a discussion with Gary Cedarstrom about this. You know it is the umpire's discretion. 
that's what the rule is as far as blocking the plate goes. Now, looking at the replay, it was obvious that Jeff Mathis was already in his position to catch the ball and block the plate before the ball arrived. See where he is, and well, I don't see a problem with that. And if you if you take that particular play and make it a a problem, I mean, with baseball's going in the wrong direction. If that's over. So this is up to the umpire's discretion, guys. He's in front of the plate before he has the ball. The manager may request but cannot challenge this. But if the umpires decide that they want to review it, they can. And in this case, it looks like they are going to review it. And based on the quote unquote new rule, and I, Mike, I agree with, I think a lot of people are, are in agreement with you that, you know, this blocking the plate, the the idea behind it, it you're going to run into these issues. You know, in, the, in a year ago, that's a clean play. There was nothing wrong with that. Oh, and if they really, if they don't allow the catcher to do kind of what Mathis did there, it kind of takes him out of the play. He's got to sweep it. Yeah. That's what their thought is. He has to sweep the tag, and it's saying he's out at home plate. Hmm. I have to say that I'm in agreement that, see, now they can't argue it, and that's what Cedarson just said. I have to say that I'm in agreement that the blocking is kind of a, a rule that's up for interpretation, but he was blocking the plate before he had the ball. Based on the rule, that should be overturned that he should be safe. But because the, the base runner now is not allowed to roll into. I don't think of anything questionable about that play at the plate. Two outs for Howard and Howard whacks it foul. It's 0 and 1. I mean our game is it, if there's something questionable about that play at the plate we're headed in the wrong direction. No, we're I, I, can it, believe me. Trying to make it way too safe. I, I think that Jamie, Jamie and I uh, I think we're all in agreement of that because we were talking about during spring training that the whole blocking there's a lot of players that don't agree with the blocking of the plate rule and the discussion of it. Well now it's up to Howard to try to drive in the run. One ball and one strike. And it's all new to us, you know, the what's up to the umpire, the, the discretion, all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of a learning curve as we go through it. Out toward left center field, Yelich comes running in. He's got a beat on it. Now the side is retired. So Mathis is able to tag out Tony Gwynn with a potential go ahead run. We've played six on to the seventh. It's a 3 3 ball game. Right now with Tony Gwynn, this has been ongoing during the course of this half inning, or in between this, these half innings. Tony was thrown out trying to score. Tony approached them, and if you're a Gwynn, you're going to be a nice guy, and you're going to approach it in a nice way. And Gary Cedarstrom is pleading his case. I mentioned it's a, you know, whether we agree with it or not, 
the stopping of running into catchers and stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be an interpretation that we're all going to have to follow and try to understand as the year goes on. As we take a look at our game summary brought to you by your local Honda dealers. We're at 3-3. Phillies tied it up with two in the bottom of the fifth on Will Nieves' is double. Kyle Kendrick is done after six innings, seven strikeouts. And now as we go to the top of the seventh inning, B.J. Rosenberg will take over for the Phillies. Against Echeverria Stanton and Garrett Jones. This is the fifth ball game for Rosenberg. And he pitched a scoreless inning last night with a stiff neck. They weren't sure if he could even pitch last night. And he'll start against Echeverria here in the seventh inning. Ground ball to third. One away. Stanton's coming up. Murph, what about the Phillies bullpen? A little bit of a change today with Justin DeFreitas, a great guy. Yeah. Uh, getting down, sent down to, the, to Lehigh Valley, and Luis Garcia being added. Yeah, you know, they're trying to shake things up and, uh, you know, find a, a, a fit, a good fit for this Phillies bullpen. And as you mentioned, Justin DeFreitas, uh, it really is a terrific guy. Yeah, he's going to go down to AAA and then hopefully work on some things and then work his way back up here. I had a chance to talk to B.J. Rosenberg and, and Jake Diekman, uh, you know, just about that entire process. And, you know, uh, B.J. said there's no worse feeling in the world and when, when you get that uh, message from your manager that you're headed back down it's, it's he said it's a long drive back to the Lehigh Valley but that said both Diekman and Rosenberg said that they really believe that the uh, you know, just needs to work on a couple little things and and tweak some things and they expect him to be back up there and Tom as you know those three are, are as thick as Steve so you know it was a little it was a very uh, bitter day for the the guys that are still up here knowing that uh, that Justin is headed back. Yeah, we mentioned that Michael Mike Adams uh, could be available the next couple of days, so there may be another move that Phillies will make. Yeah, they mentioned that as well. <laughs> they, they're counting the numbers uh, for sure because you know it, it's a tenuous position when you're uh, when you're a middle reliever and uh, you know you, every chance you get, you, you need to, to prove to your manager that uh, that you're capable of getting the job done. And uh, you know Jake Deakman certainly has done that this year. B.J. Rosenberg has looked good in his last couple of outings, but you know there's always a little bit of. Uh, uh, of uncertainty when, when that kind of situation arises. Well, he looks really good on this pitch, guys. I mean, this is a very good pitch to get John Carlos Stanton. Yeah, BJ last night and today looked very good. And yeah, there's a very good slider right there for strike three against a very tough hitter. Well, here's Garrett Jones. His home run gave the Marlins a 3 1 lead in the fifth inning. Didn't hit a first ball fastball for the home run, and that was a first ball fastball right there. But as you said, in a good spot. Exactly. The home run by Jones was his first of the year. One ball and one strike. Your old teammate Larry Boa, when I was talking to him today, he was discussing B.J. Rosenberg. He said that's the best he's looked. I and mean, he was genuinely excited about how Rosenberg looked last mm -hmm. time. Well, he knows how important those seven, eighth, seventh, and eighth inning guys are. One ball and two strikes to Garrett Jones. And how important is it when a pitcher is throwing strikes and getting quick outs versus when a guy is not throwing strikes and getting outs and forcing you to stand out? As a defensive player, what kind of an impact does that have? Well, uh, we love we defensive guys love pitchers that work fast. We love them. We love them that work fast and throw strikes, put the ball in play. Well, that's a nine pitch inning. That's pretty darn fast for B.J. Rosenberg. Time to stretch here at Citizens Bank Park.
of the seventh inning. The Marlins three, the Phillies three. The Marlins are going to their bullpen. It'll be A.J. Ramos who will take over for Miami. And he will take uh, on Marlon Bird, Dominic Brown, and Will Nieves here in the bottom of the seventh inning. These lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They will receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. Ramos's numbers this is the second game he's worked in the series. It's not allowed a run in six games so far. Five strikeouts and four and a third. And he'll face Marlon Bird as one for two with the walk here this afternoon. This Thursday, it's a business person special here at Citizens Bank Park, a 105 start against the Braves, and it's our Citizens Bank Red Goes Green Day. For information, you can visit phillies.com slash red goes green or order tickets at phillies.com. Plus, all fans will receive an MLB Network reusable tote when they come to the park. You can check out phillies.com to see everything that's going on that day. All right, Mike, how does the approach change here in the bottom of the seventh for a guy like Marlon Bird? Anything different that, that you would do at this spot? Well, not me. Uh, look early, look fastball early. Uh, don't swing at a breaking ball till you have two strikes on you. Stay in the middle of the field. There is that breaking ball early, and it's 0 1. That's good hitting. If you're sitting on, you know, fastball, his favorite pitch to hit, they throw you a breaking ball, starts behind your back, and breaks over the home plate. You spit on it. <laughs> Tried to check and he didn't go. This is Gary Cedar's trim. It's one and one. Shadows are sort of encompassing home plate. So the pitchers in sunshine, the hitters in shadows. Shadows from the light stanchion up above. Marlon hits one straight back. All right, just so you know, guys, this is. That's the trajectory that we'd be going with. It was coming back here in the booth. That ball that just came back from Marlin. <laughs> and it's one and two. Marlins perfect fit for this club. Durable. Kind of like right now, I think mean, he's mid 30s, but probably at his confidence levels at an all time high right now. Swing the miss, and he's down on strikes. He's a totally different player now than he was when he was originally with the Phillies. Right. I mean, he was a big time prospect when he was originally with the Phillies, but it just didn't work out. Dominic Brown is now the hitter. He's one for three. He struck out his first two times up singled and scored his last time. Well, he's trying to sweep this series and finish up this home or finish up the these first six games with a three and three record at home. It's like Ramos has the whole the whole package. <laughs> Seen a lot of different pitches up here. And another good arm. I mean, they just keep firing out good arms. It's and they're all young, young kids. Fastball outside, two and one. We talked about uh, the deals they've made, Jamie. And last night's pitcher come in the Hammock Ramirez deal with the Dodgers, Uvalde. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. 
And there's a kid, you know, a young kid out of high school, had a Tommy John surgery, and the Dodgers just they drafted him a year after his surgery, and I think it was an 11th round pick, and he's turned into the pitcher he is. I mean, it's a great testament to to Nathan. One pitch to Dominic Brown outside ball four, so he's aboard. It's so hard for, let's say, the Marlin fan base to accept those deals like Hanley Ramirez goes, Jose Reyes goes, Mark Burley goes. I mean, all yeah. these guys that you think are going to help open up this new stadium. But now you're starting to see it, you know, see what they're trying to do. And listen, their reputation is that they've gotten rid of stars before. I think the, fan, the Marlins fans are probably fearful that John Carlos Stanton's the next guy that's going to go. Oh, and it potentially could happen, you know, based on how they play and you know where, the, where their payroll levels are. The A base is three for three. He single twice. He's doubled home two. Brown leads off first. Five ball to center. And then Ozuna comes in. And there are two outs. Tonight, get a breakdown of the Flyers' first round of the playoffs against the New York Rangers with our panel of experts on Cup Central, presented by GMC tonight at 6.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Flyers with an exciting win yesterday. And now Cody Ashey. Who has 0 for 2? He's lined out. He struck out. He was walked intentionally. Change up on the outside corner. It's 0 and 1. Good toss over the first. Mike, what is it that you like about Cody Ashley that you've seen so far? Wants to learn. Uh, really, really good kid. Wants to pick your brain. Likes to talk defense. Likes to talk hitting. Absorbs it like a sponge. Uh, and he's got good actions, good hands, got a good arm. He's hit everywhere he's been. I still think he's a little uncomfortable up here, you know, trying to prove himself. Uh, Kind of force it, force it a little bit too much. I mean, I see, I know how good a hitter he is, and I see the bat being swung a lot. In other words, he, he goes out of the strike zone a lot. He seems a little bit over anxious all the time. And that's really not his game, what he was before. Well, I never saw him hit other than uh, in the minor leagues last year and what right. I've seen so far this year, but I'm assuming uh, with the mechanics that I see that he is a really good hitter. He's just being over aggressive now. He'll settle in and get his couple big hits in a game one day coming up here, maybe right now, and uh, it'll all come into place. I think he's going to be a big part of our future. One ball and two strikes to Ashy. And it's a foul again. Oh, well, going back to spring training, Tom, when they told him he made the team, and he, and, you know, he kind of just took it in stride and said, you know what? I've got I won't believe it till my name is in the lineup right. and, you know and I get out you know, that's a great way to approach it. Half of this game is is how you deal with it in your head. What did Yogi say? Half this game is 90 percent mental or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get it right because it it, it was a uh, such an abstract say. <laughs> Somebody will tweet that to us. Yeah. <laughs> One ball and two strikes to Ashy. Outside two and two. The thing about Cody's numbers the last two years in the minor leagues is that he's progressively gotten better as the year has moved on. You know, so there, so he's adjusting. He may start out slow, but then all of a sudden, boom. And that, that sometimes bodes well, I would think, for a young guy. Well, you like to see that too, because he doesn't wear out. Good running count here. Let's see if Dominic goes. He does. Outside, the throw to second on one hop, and it's kicked away. 
Stolen base. And a runner in scoring position. Good call there, Mike. Thank you. That's the manager in you, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yogi's quote was 90% of the game is mental and the other half is physical. <laughs> Puts Cody Ashy in a little bit of a difficult position now with first base open. And Revere out on deck is a possible pinch hitter. In the dirt, ball four. Yeah. Looks like they are staying with Ben Revere as a pinch hitter. Jamie, I'd rather face that guy coming off the bench any day than the guy that's been in the game. Yeah, it's, you know, the only thing, I mean, as a relief pitcher, I think you're right. As a starter, I think I'd rather face the guy that's in the game because I have a little bit of a history with him and I've created, you know, what I want to do and he's shown me what he can and can't do. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think, you know, in this situation, though, I think I, I, I you're 100% right. Well, Revere has not started these last three games. He's been battling some sore ribs. He was fine today, though. Ryan Sandberg basically said that he just liked the way Tony Gwynn had looked in center, so he wanted to play him again. Outside, 1 0. Tommy, it's tough to change a winning lineup. You know, you know how in golf and your partner leads off the hits before you oh, and you yeah. win a couple of holes. I'm, don't change that lineup. Jamie didn't change his stirrup sanitary stirrup socks for like a year <laughs> When things are going well, he hasn't had ice cream in two days either. 1 0 pitch. That's a strike, 1 and 1. Peeve of mine, you know, I'm watching uh, our, our base runners. If Cody Ashy on first base has it in his mind that he's going to beat an infield ground ball or a chopper somewhere in the infield, because they know Revere's a runner, he has it in his mind that he's going to beat the play to second base. He could keep an inning alive. You could create a lot of the uh, disturbance by getting a really big jump. I mean, the first baseman's playing in the on the outfield grass almost. Yeah, good secondary lead, I think, yeah. is what you're yeah. referring to. Yep. But you got to want to, you know, you got to want to beat that throw to second base. You get your you get your teammate a hit, keep a rally alive. He's even with Garrett Jones now as he takes his lead. One ball and two strikes to Revere. Outside two and two. Ben was a pitch hitter in last night's ball game and hit one right off the pitcher. Well now the runners will be off. In these last two at bats, they're really making Ramos work for whatever his results are. Tony Wood on deck. He's having a pretty productive day. We always hope that Ben Revere can be productive here with the runners on first and second. Three balls and two strikes and two outs here at the bottom of the seventh. And the pitch. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. And Revere is. Thrown out on the strikeout, and the side is retired. Two walks, two strikeouts in the inning for Ramos. We've completed seven. We go to the eighth. It's the Marlins three and the Phillies three.
local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. By WB Mason, you can't go wrong when you buy right. And by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. As we go to the top of the eighth inning, it's a 3-3 ball game. The Marlins of the Phillies, we reflect now to our Hyundai defensive play of the game. Mike, you said it before, we're going to see this for the rest of the night. This is a line drive that caught Kyle Kendrick earlier in the game. Less than a half second reaction time for Kyle. Brought to you by our, your local Hyundai dealers. That was back in the fourth inning. You see him that one in your sleeve, Jamie. Yeah. Well, at least he caught it. You said it was self defense. Antonio Bastardo, six ball games, 0 and 1, a 2.84 ERA. Last three starts, or last three outings, Bastardo's walked the leadoff man. Trying to get him to, well, obviously not do that here in the top of the eighth. Why didn't somebody tell him not to walk the lead off? <laughs> <laughs> then he will face uh, Casey McGee to start it off. It'll be McGee, Marcelo Zuna, and Jeff Baker. And like last night, the game's coming down to the wire here, top of the eighth inning. Marlins led it 2 0, then 2 1, then 3 1, and the Phillies tied it up at 3 with 2 in their fifth. First pitch is a strike. It's 0 and 1. Threw it right to the glove. Love I'm just going to say. I'm just going to say he didn't move the glove, did he? Will put the glove out there. He threw it right to it. There's something to be said for seeing that glove the whole time. Didn't miss by much either. And that's a good feeling when you're able to do that. Kind of like when you're hitting those four home runs in a row. Hmm. Yeah, the dirt one ball and two strikes. Marlins with three runs on six hits. The Phillies three and three runs on twelve. They've left twelve runners. The Phillies have through the first seven innings of this game. You know, Tommy, you only remember that if you lose a ball game. So hopefully we'll win this thing and they'll never be mentioned again. They figure they're they've got the three, but they've had so many race runners, they're due to do something. There you go. First batter face this year. Five walks. Well, he's not gonna walk him. And then a fly ball to right. Marlon Berg, glasses on, makes the catch. One out. Four up, four down for the Phillies bullpen. Mike, this is where we do the Major League Notebook. We'll okay. turn it over to Greg Murphy, and he's going to provide it. Murph, take it away, buddy. Well, thank you very much. And, Mike, the Major League Notebook is brought to you by Gwinnett Mercy University. Just so you know that. The Cincinnati Red starter Matt Latos told reporters this morning that he got some good news and some bad news on the soreness in his elbow and forearm. The good news was it's not very serious, but the bad news is he's still going to be shut down for 10 to 14 days. The actual diagnosis, a flexor mass strain. Uh, the Reds are hopeful that just a little rest will take care of that. And the news, though, not as good for Ryan Zimmerman, the Washington Nationals third baseman who may have the toughest luck in all of baseball, I think. Uh, he broke his thumb last yesterday, diving back into first base on a pickoff move. Will be out four to six weeks for the uh, Washington Nationals. He was also battling some arthritis in his throwing shoulder. So combine those two things. He's been on the DL all, for the last four years at some stint during the last four years. So Ryan Zimmerman shelved, guys, for four to six weeks going forward. Tough luck. Guys, tough luck, and the Braves are leading that game 10 to 1 right now in the ninth inning against the Nationals. Swing and a miss by Ozuna. It's 1 and 2. Murph, I couldn't help but notice that you're wearing a uh, bracelet. Uh, I, I am wearing a bracelet. Some kind of band. What is that? Well, you know what? I, I had a uh, conversation with some folks uh, up in Section 413, uh, the uh, Live the Donor Life program for uh, organ donors, um, a couple who had lost their son but uh, donated his organs and uh, was able to save a couple of different people by doing that. Mm -hmm. And they're just trying to raise awareness. So I told them I'd wear the bracelet for, for the rest of the game and then probably for a little while longer. So, all right. Well, we appreciate that. Thanks for the report. You got it. Marcelo Zuna is down on strikes. Well, that's interesting. I think that's the third hand or thumb injury this week 
with a guy going on the DL or having surgery yep. because of a dive into a base. Mm. Yeah, uh, Josh Hamilton was the first one, yep. right? D diving into first on a ground ball. Yes. Not on a pickoff. Baker takes low. It's one ball and no strikes. Yeah, I think the second was Jessiel Puig, right? Wasn't that the uh, the other guy that, right. that happened to? And then Zimmerman was diving back into first base, which makes a little bit more sense uh, when he got injured. So, hmm. but yeah, it's an epidemic right now. Maybe they ought to outlaw the dive. Maybe we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just wrap them all in bubble wrap. We'll be fine. Out of play, one ball and one strike. Yeah, they'll ban the head first slide or the head first dive. They're just going to go feet first, everybody. Baker is 0 for 3. He's grounded out. He's gone down looking on strikes. He's popped out to short. Starno trying to get through this eighth. A little low, two and one. Well, the difference in uh, Antonio's outing today versus his previous two is he's down in the zone and he's ahead in the count. He's not ahead in this particular count, but in the two previous counts. That one's pulled towards short on one hop, and Jimmy Rollins makes a fine play, and it's in time. He got up pretty quick and let it go, and the side is retired. Six up, six down for the Phillies' bullpen. This ball got on J-Roll pretty quick. He was able to grab it, fell to his knees, and then popped up to his feet and quickly threw a strike over to first. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth That's inning. Right. It's the Marlins three, Phillies three. Celebrate spring and start making plans for Phillies game. Check the opening week schedule of games uh, or the opening week homestand, the rest of it with the Braves coming to town tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday by going to Phillies.com. There's a whole lot going on during the springtime here at Citizens Bank Park. You can check out Phillies.com for more information. Marlins three, Phillies three, bottom of the eighth inning. How about this play by Jimmy Rollins to end the inning there, Mike? Fantastic play. I mean, that's a that's a serious in between hop on a nasty line drive. Show great hands with it and great awareness to just relax and understand the timing of the runner and that he didn't have to hurry and then get up over the top with his throw. Yeah, remember that batter barely a couple of steps out of the box when that ball gets to you. You got all day to throw him out. Just got to calm yourself down yeah. and not speed it up too much. Right. Here's Mike Dunn, six ball game for Dunn. I know we've we've alluded to this before. I mean, this is 12 games into the season. I, I do think Jimmy's moving very well at shortstop, at least in the early going of the season. 
Tony Gwynn will start it off against Dunn. First pitch is a slider away. It's one ball and no strikes. Tony Gwynn is three for four. Outside, two and zero. Oh. This could be the biggest pitch of the game right here. Is he going to take it? Or take a strike? He's going to take it if it's a slider like that. <laughs> You didn't like him throwing the slider there? Oh, I, I don't know how. I mean, it, he, he's, he's that confident that he can throw a slider for a strike. 2 0. Oh. It's amazing. Down the left field line, it's 2 and 2. I honestly might believe that most pitchers aren't calling their own game in today's game. I think a lot of the catchers are taking control of the game. And I got to believe probably more so in, you, in, in the era that you played in a lot of the pitchers had more control of what they threw. Little roller to the right side Baker will charge. And Gwynn is retired. One out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And that'll bring Jimmy Rollins to the plate. Rollins is 0 for 4. He's lined out. He's grounded out twice. And he's lined to right. That was his last time up. Well, Jimmy hit the home run yesterday in the bottom of the tenth inning against a left hander on a slider. He was very confident once that ball left his bat that it was going to leave the yard. Very confident. I asked the guys in the dugout if they thought it was going out when he left the bat. Uh, and that's Boa and, and Sandberg. They said they weren't sure. They, they just watched how the outfielder was fading back and. They said, okay, it's got a chance, but they didn't, they weren't as confident as Jimmy was that it was going to go out of the yard. Here's the 1 0 pitch to Rollins. Outside, 2 0. There's the dugout watching it. Some guys thought it. Then they weren't so sure. And then they were like, okay. Two and one. That one's right around the plate. And Garrett Jones makes the call coming down from first base. And now two outs here in the eighth inning, and it'll bring Chase Utley to the plate. Utley has two more hits today. He's two for three with a walk. He's hit it ten straight to start the season. It's the first time since Pat Burrell in 05 that a Philly has started the season with a 10-game hitting streak. We're talking about this before about the celebration. Jimmy had a, or this is your celebration, your last walk off. This is last night. Everybody's out there. <laughs> I was in one of those scrums in the World Baseball Classic a few years back when uh, David Rodman and David Wright down in Miami flared one down the right field line and scored a couple runs and and we won the game. It was, it was a walk off. Uh, Broken bat double, which ended up winning the game, and he came around towards second base and shortstop. I was the first one to get there. Utley sends one in the air to right field. Stanton's going back toward the wall. It is gone. 
Solo home run for Chase Utley. And the Phillies take the lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Guys, he, he, he is stalling. You know, Chase is stalling. And this Dunn is a tough left handed pitcher. Locked in. You think? Three home runs, 10 RBIs, eight runs scored. It's a terrific first 10 games for Chase Utley, and this is a sweet swing right here. Looks like beautiful, beautiful. short, quick, I down. Was, yeah, I don't know if it was a slider or a fastball. It was down, but it was over the middle of the plate. And you know, like you said, Mike, you know, they keeping the ball in the middle of the field. You know, it's slightly off the middle of the field, but he's using the bigger part of the diamond. I guess my story about David Wright and the World Baseball Classic is. We'll do that. We'll save that for another Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Chase is thrilled. There he is in the dugout. <laughs> oh. It's a lot like you were. Yeah. Shucks, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> that commie is just his arms crossed over there. One ball and one strike to Howard. Howard's homer today. The Phillies have had two home runs here this afternoon. I think Utley's got a shot at player of the week. We were shocked what he wasn't in the running the last week. He wasn't even in the on the list of guys that were considered after the first week of the season. He'd be player of the month and not player of the week. Mm. His average is an even 500 10 games his it's 12 games into the year but for him 10 because he missed those two. One ball and two strikes to Howard. A little high two and two. Papelbon is throwing in the bullpen for the Phillies now that they have the lead. He was up earlier. Now that they have the lead, he'll come into a save situation instead of trying to preserve a tie going into the bottom of the ninth inning. Howard stays alive, punches it foul. Boy, those little cue shots over the dugout, those are lethal. Yes, they are. Quickly as these stadiums have evolved and they seem to be a little closer to the field. You've got to pay attention when you're. Yeah, never take that your eye off that hitter, right? Two balls and two strikes to Howard. Whoa. It's good peeping right there. And Howard draws a walk, so the inning's still alive with the Phillies on top by one. And Marlon Bird will face the lefty Mike Dunn. John Mayberry is going to come out to pinch run for Ryan Howard. Ryan Sandberg said they may do this, you know, late in the game with a one run lead. They may bring somebody in as a defensive replacement for Ryan Howard. You got to do it. You got to be able to score in a double. Uh, you you got to have your best defensive guy at first base. I'm surprised you're not uh, bringing in a right handed pitcher. I was thinking the same thing. I looked up just to see with Papelbon warming up for the Phillies if there was anybody up in the Marlins bullpen, but nobody's up. Marlin chops it foul right past Pete McCann, and it's 0 and 1. Well, and just like Deakman and Hollins are very effective getting righties and lefties out, I have a feeling that Mike Redman is in the same situation here with Dunn. In the dirt, and it's one and one to Marlin. Marlin singled back in the third inning. That's his one hit. He's also walked, so he's been on base twice.
Fans are into the game, Mike. <laughs> Two strikes, a swing and a miss by Bird. bird has got decent speed at first. Close pitch to take one two. It's two and two. Good eye by Marlin. Great eye. Decker. <laughs> Look, if one comes up here, it's yours. No, no. It has to you be guys yours. got it. No. I can't. I can't risk it. I know you can't find all your gold gloves, <laughs> but you have more gold gloves than we do. <laughs> Charlie O'Gara, our camera operator, he doesn't have any gold gloves up here. Swing and a miss. Bird is struck out. Side is retired, but the Phillies do take the lead. They get a solo home run by Chase Utley for the hottest hitter in the National League to start the season, or at least one of them. And he goes down to find a pitch that he could drive, and he drives it into the seats and right. And the Phillies lead it four to three as Jonathan Papelbon is coming in. Analysis plus a full recap and highlights from today's series finale with the Marlins only on Pure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Jonathan Papelbon's coming on here in the top of the ninth inning. He pitched in the top of the ninth last night. He allowed a couple base runners in the tie ball game, but was able to get Greg Dobbs to pop out to short. So he's on here to face the bottom of the order, but it's going to be Salt and Lamakia instead of Mathis. And then the pitcher spot, and it's going to be Dobbs for the Marlins. Papelbon does have a couple of saves this year. He's blown one. That was the game in Texas on that Wednesday night. One thing about last night is that his velocity was probably the highest it's been this year. We'll see how he responds pitching day game after night game. Outfield is deep all the way around to cut off the alleys. First pitch is over for a strike. It's 0 1. A 
believe Mark Rippinger, the home plate umpire, is now hearing it from the other dugout. <laughs> Off to Lamakia, 286 hitter. Outside, one and one. Tied him up, one and two. Every time the Phillies retire, the opposition one, two, three, and they've done it the last two innings. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Jamie, so remember Salta Machia in the, in the postseason last year? Big uppercut, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. and it was a great pitch right there. You saw he got it above his hands. You pitch a guy that has an uppercut swing a little differently than a normal guy. Is there? Well, he's got to be pretty. You know, the strongest part of his hitting zones is low ball for sure. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You generally, don't. I'm, I'm speaking from uh, experience. You generally don't handle the ball up with some hair on it uh, as well as low ball. It's one and two. Pulls that one towards second. Boy, he was way out in front of it. Turned out to be a good pitch by Papelbon. That splitter went away. You saw where uh, Saltolamaki had a reach for that pitch. Good change of speed, got him out in front and took the sting out of his bat. He rolled over and hit a couple hopper to chase. Turns into a routine play. Yeah, it's tough to set up by the couple of fastballs. He threw right by him. Well, now Dobbs, who's one for seven on the season. Last night in his pinch hit at bat, he chased the first pitch and flied out. So be interesting to see what kind of an approach he gives here today. Goes after the first pitch again, it's 0 and 1. One strike. High fly ball to shallow right. Utley goes out. Bird comes in. It's Marlin who makes the call. And there are two outs. So Papelbon is one out away from trying to from saving this ball game for the Phils after the Utley home run. And Christian Yelich, the leadoff hitter, is due up. I guess we're playing defense on the lines. I don't see the third baseman, but I. John Mayberry, I guess you would say he's guarding the line. Mm -hmm. Like seeing over a little bit more. Over toward the line a little bit yeah. more? Yeah. Took it with the lefty up. I guess you would expect Ashley to be off now. Well, with the lefty he, up. you know, he could hook a line drive that starts out right at him and hooking away from him and get it maybe inside the bag. And you've got to make it three hits to score a run. No balls and one strike to Yelich. Shoot one and two. 
Every other fastball's been up, down, in, out. That was right down the chute. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Applebaum's ready. Add the pitch. And the dirt to a two. Trying to get him with a split. You gotta be careful. You can't take for granted and just stick it in there. I mean, this guy can hit a home run. Pitch again, and it's now three and two. Echeverry is on deck. Yelich bought himself a fastball right here. Good point. But you never know. <laughs> well, that's true. You got to get him to swing the bat. Over to shortstop. This should do it. Rollins has got it. Fires to first in time. And the Phillies have swept out the Marlins. They win it four to three here this afternoon. Jonathan Papelbon earns his third save of the season as he closes out what was a very effective day for the bullpen. Nine up, nine down here this afternoon. And Ryan Sandberg's team is back to the 500 mark with a record of six and six. And they've got Chase Sutley in some ways. The guy to thank, three for four, a home run, a double, two runs scored. He is our Chevrolet player of the game. Oh, there's some big hits here this afternoon. The Phillies were down 2 nothing at one point early on. And Ryan Howard provided the pop. He said he was one of the keys, and he got the yeah, scoring start. Right. One of the keys in the game, Ryan Howard, had squared that fastball up. Straight away center just kept carrying and carrying. Boom, home run. And then D.A. base the backup catcher. It's always good when the backup catcher can provide a little offense, too. Yeah, he did a really nice job today. Several three hits and drove in two big runs. Well, that was the big one right there. A pitch in the happy zone. Hot hitter Chase Early, the hottest hitter in the league. On his way to player of the month. That's right. We're campaigning for it. <laughs> player of the month, Chase Utley. That was the fourth run the Phillies scored this afternoon. It turned out to be the game winner as they have defeated the Miami Marlins four to three. They've evened up this homestand at three wins and three losses. And they've also gotten back to the 500 mark overall with a record of six and six. Also banged out 13 hits overall here today. So Chase Utley is our star of the game. And for that, he gets a chance to chat with Murph. Murph. All right. Thanks a lot, Tom. Uh, well, for the second straight game, you guys win it in your final at bat. Uh, that's got to energize the clubhouse, I would imagine. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, both nights we got a good starting starting job from our, from our pitcher. Um, and we kind of battled throughout the course of the game. The fans today were great. Uh, so that was a big help. Talk a little bit about playing here at home. You know, you get swept by the Brewers, but then you come back and are able to sweep the Marlins team. It, it, get back to 500 here. This has been such a home field advantage for you guys for so long. How important is that? It really is. You know, our fans are our 10th man out there. Uh, they, they've been supportive to, for us for, for a long time. So. Uh, I hope they continue to come out to support us, and uh, we're having a good time. Yeah, talk a little bit about how this offense has battled, uh, especially in this series. You know, you, you fall behind a little bit today, you, you're able to come back. I mean, just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's the whole goal is try to try to put runs on the board. Uh, occasionally, you're going to run into a tough pitcher, uh, but you try to get guys on base and, and score them. And, and you mentioned, uh, you know, it, it, this is probably an understatement, but you seem a little locked in right now. I mean, you, you're seeing the ball pretty good, I guess. Just trying to find some holes. Just trying to find. He's humble as always, guys. Chase, thanks for your time. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Murph, thank you very much. Chase, a little superstitious, doesn't want to talk too much about it. It has been a heck of a start for him, though. He's got a 10 game hitting streak to begin the season, and the Phillies win it 4 to 3. We will be back to Citizens Bank Park to wrap it up right after this.